What up, guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel, and welcome to the pregame. <laughs> Before I start, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. That way you're going to be notified of my daily videos like the video on your way in. We have a special panel tonight. But before we get to that, a couple announcements before we start the show. The first is that we have two clips channels, Just Pearly Clips and Pearl Daily. Make sure you go subscribe to both of those. Sign up for our membership Tears, follow me on Instagram, and thank you for 800K, and thank you for 100 episodes. All right, guys, let's take a quick second and hear from our channel sponsor. Identity theft in America is skyrocketing. U.S. consumers reported roughly 588,000 cases of identity theft tied to credit cards, auto loans, and other financing last year. That's up a shocking 155,000 cases compared to five years earlier. But you can help prevent your data being stolen with Virtual Shield 1. Virtual Shield 1 monitors your accounts for red flags from identity theft and is backed up to $1 million in insurance coverage. This all-in-one security suite also comes with an anonymous browsing with virtual shields, no log, military-grade encrypted VPN. One privacy study showed 31% of respondents experienced a data breach within the last 18 months. Imagine the peace of mind you'll have knowing Virtual Shield 1 is looking out for you. Virtual Shield is available for Android and iOS mobile devices as well as desktop and tablet. Act now and get a free dark web scan and 67% off with a 60-day risk-free across all of your devices by visiting www.virtualshield.com slash pearly. That's www.virtualshield.com slash pearly. Or simply click the link in the description box below. Find out why myself and hundreds of thousands of users trust Virtual Shield 1 every day. Remember, supporting my sponsor helps support the channel. Thank you guys again. Okay, so um, why don't we go around and have everyone on the panel introduce introduce yourself, say your name, your age, your relationship status, where are you from, and just a little bit about you. Um, why don't we start here? Okay, hi everyone, my name is Brittany Renner, I am 30 years old, I'm single as a Pringle, I have a one and a half year old son, and I'm here to learn something new today. I'll, uh, I'll help you with that. <laughs> That's why they brought me. <laughs> Damn. Well, so they brought me here to look for trouble. It's the now the troublemaker. You thought she couldn't do it, but she did it. Here she is. I am freshly 30. I am single, mm, not ready to mingle yet. And something interesting about me. Well, I'm a smart woman. I'm here to see if Mr. Tate can learn something from me. Oh. <sighs> Sagittarius, Sagittarius, relax, please. Be nice, be nice. Come on, I wasn't rude. Andrew Tate, 36 years old. I cannot disclose personal information because, of course, my enemies are after me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm here to educate, as I always am. Perhaps somebody will say something remotely insightful, but uh, at least I get a clementine if not. So <laughs> I'm chilling with my orange. And it's your girl, Esther, the Nigerian queen. I'm here to entertain to disagree with somebody in here. <laughs> oh, Auntie, she's looking really, at you. Oh. Really? <laughs> I oh. am looking at somebody. It's her favorite duo. It's her favorite <laughs> duo. <laughs> but no, for real though, I'm just here to have a good time. Just, yeah, get some vibes. And in terms of my relationship status, I am single, doing interviews. I'm not just going for anybody. But yeah, that's how it is. Auntie Jenny here, 54. I'm here to cut out the bullshit. Simple. <laughs> I like that. Okay. I like that. Thank you, guys. Bet you do. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to cut the bullshit. That's the problem with the world today. It's too much bullshit. And they're not direct. If they've got something to say to you, just say it. Absolutely. Why are don't you be being mean already? Be I don't really say care. It. If oh. you've got something to say, just say it. Don't nah. beat around the bush. Just say it. So basically, I'll say it. Say, I already got my just team say it. Made. Just 100%. say it. Hey, Auntie, oh, yeah. I beg, give the girl a chance to speak now and relax. What girl? Hey. What have I said? This one. What have I said? I'm addressing the elephant what in have the I room, said? Isn't it? Auntie. Listen, I don't believe in anything. If there's but... something to say, just say it. Don't beat around the bush. If you've got something to say to me, I am here. Talk to my face. There shouldn't be no elephant in the room because this ain't no zoo. You understand? Hey, so hey. if you've got something to say, just say it. We're me? All big... No, I'm just saying. <gasps> We're just all big people here. 
So if okay. I want to say something to you, I'm going to say something to you straight like I normally do. Yes. If I've got something to say to Esther, I'm going to tell Esther. Whether she likes it or not, I don't really care. Andrew Tate, my son's older than him, so I don't give a damn who he is. I'm going to just say what I've got to say. So whoever don't like it, that's tough. Don't come. You, you missed be out, here. Brittany. I feel picked on. <laughs> okay, so... Um... And Brittany too, right? <laughs> e even Pearl too. <laughs> feel better now. Yeah, Auntie, Auntie gave me... Um... Auntie was yelling at me in wife school the other day. Oh. She, she doesn't give a shit. Um, <laughs> okay, so my first question is, what is the number one problem facing men today, and what is the number one problem facing women today? I'm going to say something. Come on, ladies. Everybody's going to educate you know, me. The, the number one problem... All the questions. Come on, tell the me. The number one problem with men is that they don't tell women the truth, and the number one problem with women is that they can't, they can't handle the truth. Simple. Ooh. That, mm. that's a good that's a good paradigm to start from because it's actually very interesting you say that a lot of women say i just want a man who's honest and then the second you're honest she's like what you did exactly. what it's like well then don't ask me for honesty of course i fucking lie <laughs> thank you so that's a good that's a good point i agree with that one mm. that, i don't think it's the biggest problem but it certainly is a problem in relationships today that is a problem the biggest problem with men today is that i think the world is becoming hyper competitive most men are not aware and understanding of how quickly there's going to be a genuine shift in between those who have things and those who do not have things. Not just finances, but also female status, everything else. And it's a status game, right? And it's becoming harder and harder for men to play. <coughs> and that's all women's fault, of course. <laughs> because, no, but it is because women choose the winners, right? Women choose who the high status males are. So women pretend to give a shit about men of course they don't they, they give a shit about themselves and and and, and, a, and, a, and a woman oh and a woman when she, and a woman a woman if you ask her what she wants from a man she's like i don't want much i just want to find a nice man who's a millionaire and six foot tall and funny and charismatic and interesting and spontaneous and looks after me and doesn't cheat and and is funny and good looking and strong i don't want much like they, they name all this shit that most dudes are never going to have and it's becoming harder and harder and you end up with people Top G's who own everything on the planet they could ever possibly wish for. And then you've got other guys who have nothing. And you're, there's this large divide. There's no longer any middle ground. You have dudes who can't get any pussy. And then you've got dudes who are just blocking girls left, right, and center. And that's what the problem with being a man is today. What about the women? Yeah. Well, I, well, I would women? say I'll I, tell you, I'll tell you, well, I'll everybody's I, 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 got a chance to talk. I'm gonna shut up and have my Clementine. No, I want to know. I want to know. I want to learn from you, sir. You want to learn from me? Well, yes, I wanna, sir. well, I wanted to answer. I feel like it goes for both. It's not just one or the other. I feel like it's self accountability. Definitely. Mm. Women are not accountable for themselves. I agree with you there. Why 100%. just women though? What it's about both. Men? It's yeah, both. It is definitely both. both. Yeah. It is both. You're right, but society punishes men for not being self accountable. But society does not punish women for not being self accountable. I'll give you an example. If you're a man and you're arrogant and you think you're something when you're not, trust me, society will teach you very quickly that you don't matter when you don't get laid and you stay a fucking brokey. If you're a chick and think you're something when you're not, you can run around with your ego, still get dates, still get laid, still have a fairly sensible social life. <laughs> society as a whole doesn't come along and slap you in the face with realizations. If you're a man and you think you're something you're not, it is a ticking time bomb until society teaches you a lesson. That's the difference. This is why men in general are more self-accountable because the men who are not self-accountable get fucked up. So those who are successful are very self-accountable people. They look at themselves and go, okay, the only way I'm going to get and progress further, the reason she left me, the only way I'm going to do better, make more money, et cetera, et cetera, is I have to change. Most women don't want to do that. They don't sit and think, I have to change. They think, oh, he left me because it's him, and I lost my job because my boss, and this is this because of this. They, no, you women don't look in the mirror and change a fucking thing. They ever. Don't, they, no, because ever. don't forget what you're forgetting right nowadays. They can't change it because it's all about body positivity. Are you they saying? can look sexy at a size... 28. Are you saying Lizzo's not a 10? <laughs> Are you guys trying to get me cancelled? <laughs> See, I'm not going to lie. I don't agree with what you just said because 90% of cosmetic surgery is by women. Women are trying to change as much as possible. Men don't want to change. They're not accountable oh, no, for themselves. No, like, they think that because because they're a man, you're going to be attracted to them. No, like you can you can't be fat. You stay at home. You're just playing video games, and you expect a woman to want to fuck you. No, she's not going to want to fuck you. Yeah, but then she won't. This she, is the point. And she, and 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 then she won't. And society will teach them a lesson. They might be able to pull off a little blag with a girl for a year or so, but in general, they're going to end up lonely. In general, they're going to struggle to find partners. I agree with you with the, with the cosmetic surgery exactly. thing. Women are happy to change how their appearance and change how they look, but they're not happy to change how they act. They, Most of them, they're not yes, happy they to change. Are. No, they're not. The women are changing we, what the men don't care about. The men don't care about the big old lips. Yes, they do. And the, no, they do it. The women are doing that for themselves. Yeah. Because the men don't care about it. The men mm. would rather a woman change her stinking attitude 
then put on all that makeup on here and everything. That's what the men want. But the women will go out there like, oh, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that. If you look at a man and the man said, yeah, he's fat. The man will most, if he's feeling bad about himself, he wants to make sense, he'll go and hit the gym. What's the woman going to do? Go and do Get a BBL, get her lips done, put on her makeup, put on her <laughs> hair, and stay the big old fat person that she is and say, oh, it's body positivity. The men don't even want that. And um, that's, the women are not getting all this cosmetic surgery for the men. They're right. getting it for themselves. Right. You can't yeah. turn around. What man wants a woman that's going to turn around, go and have an operation, and can't sit on a plane because her ass has been injected or been interfered with? she got to lie there on her stomach. You think the men want that? Or wake mm -mm. up in the morning before you got to hit the house. She got to put on. I'm sure I worried about some of the men because they must go out with a woman Ooh. and then when they wake up in the morning, they think who the hell is she? The scars, By the time you take fish. everything off, women need to change their attitudes before they change their makeup. I'm sure that if, even more than that, change your attitude because women have got there and they want to change mm. this, they want to change that, all the things that don't count. If you learn to, the same way how women can go out there and learn to put makeup on, learn to cook. Learn to wash by hand. Learn to please that, a man. That is so outdated, That's what you girl. need to do. That's outdated, girl. <laughs> she She's said, right. girl. That's outdated. <laughs> She's right. For who? I'm saying, it's like, you're. we had literally just talked about this off camera when we, when you guys came mm -hmm. from the airport, when we were talking about, oh, what are, what's the value system or the point system for a woman who cooks versus a, a woman who can suck good dick and fuck well? But you like, can cook and suck dick as well. No, but, but, I'm, but I'm saying is, is that Pearl, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, quoting her was that... And when she interviewed people on the street, that there was more points given to something for, like a sexual return as opposed to, oh, wash dishes by hand. There's a dishwasher. No. Why cook? We can eat out. There's a chef. The people don't get. They don't give but a fuck about that. That's what they think. Like, no, that's yeah. what, but we and literally just talked you, about this no, yesterday. No, it was okay. I did a street interview and I asked the guys, would you rather have a girl that gave good head or a good cook? And most guys, they want this. Uh, but I think that's for more, the I quick think, but satisfaction. I think, but I think that's more for like a one night stand. But, but what I'm trying to say term. is that if you, mm -hmm. all the women out there, and they're talking about, well, some of the women want to be settled down. They want a man, right? And you got to think what the man wants. The man, the man is interested in that. Look at when you when you're doing street interviews, you're interviewing single people. Mm -hmm. Look at the people there that are happily married and ask them what they do. Because all the things that the women out there are doing, you can be a housewife, you can be going out, you can suck her just as good as any old tramp on the street. And keep your man and have a man. <laughs> and yeah, I can say that because I'm 32 years in counting. Auntie, you can't say Wait, attraction is not I've important, though. No. You can't say attraction is not important, though. It is initially, important. Initially, for you to initially. Get, no, initially, exactly. You, a, a man is not, not going to find you attractive and then think, oh, because you, you, you can cook well. It's got a chef. A man's going to find you attractive and he's okay, going to. Okay, let's, let's ask Andrew. He's gonna, Andrew, is he, 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 would you be with a girl that's five out of ten because she can cook? <laughs> that ain't what I said. Well, firstly, that's not what she said, to be fair. And to secondly, I'd be with a 10 out of 10 who can cook because I'm top G. But <laughs> to make the point, I think what you have to understand is what men are looking for in a relationship. So you did the, the street interview, and you're mm -hmm. asking single people, probably young people, probably idiots who know they're on camera talking shit about good head, all this garbage. It's bullshit. What men are interested in, in life, not just in their relationship, but in their life as a whole, is status. I don't think most people understand, especially women, how competitive the male world is and how competitive it is for status. This is why men do everything they do. Men buy the faster car, not to drive any faster, because of status. It's why we want a bigger house. We don't give a shit where we live. It's because of status. It's why I want to go to the gym and get big and strong, because of status. Everything we do is about status. It's why I want the better jobs. It's why I want more money. It's why I want to be respected. So what's the number one thing we want our female to give us? Status. That's what we want. So she can give us status by being beautiful. That's one thing she can do. Mm. But another thing she could do is if I turn up home and I come home with my boys and she says, I'll cook you all a steak. That's status. Mm -hmm. That's all my boys going, Ross, you've just been out all night, and she's here, and she's going to cook for all of us, and she'll clean up and tidy up. Boom. That's the kind of girl a man's not going to want to lose because it makes him look good. Without That's what men want. Status. Suck a dick, blah, blah, blah. Listen, dick can only be sucked in so many ways. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, and no, no, let's be serious about this. Have this you is, had the Gok Gok 3000? No, 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 no. This is actually a serious point, right? This is a very serious point because the Western world has collapsed in real time, and it's a failed society. And one of the reasons it's a failed society is because of the over-sexualization, especially of females as a whole. If a woman comes up to me and goes, I'll be the best sex you ever had, I am fucking revolted. I don't <laughs> want the best sex I've ever had. I want you to be pure and a virgin. You shouldn't know what sex is. Cook my fucking dinner. Shut up. Don't, hey. talk, don't come and talk to me about fucking sucking dick. It's vile. It's disgusting. I don't want to hear that shit. Can I say something? I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> what, what I want is a woman who makes me look good. No woman who's running around talking about sucking dick can make me look good. So I lose interest completely and utterly. And that's the truth. So what she's saying is completely correct. These are old school things, but it's not about the act. Yes, you can order food, of course. <laughs> it's about the status that comes with it. That's what it's about.
Uh, Sagittarius spoken like a true one. Yeah. That is true. It's my the man, look, it's my the man's a Sagittarius. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, well, my man's a Sagittarius. So basically, it's a straight shooting sort of conversation. But I think that sometimes we get distracted and we talk about the bicker bicker of between men and women. I think that the problem that men and women have is the consequences of the bad decisions that the 1% of powerful men make on our behalf. Because our problems are on a societal level, less than between women and man. That is why there's a lot of competition between men, this chase for status that they will never get. It, why, men, why is that the fault of the 1% of men? Because they're the ones that drive the machine that runs this. The West it's is always just, been that way. Yeah, and but then think about the men that are at the top now, the corruption and everything that's going on. And this is why <gasps> it feels very good to sit some, next to somebody like you and just say, do you know what? I appreciate that you say things that are really true. You expose a very toxic truth and a very true truth as well that is out there. But the reality is, on the trenches, when you go to the grassroots, people don't feel the way that you feel. It's not as simple as what you say. They are victims of this system. So my job here is really not to try and make it about men and women. It's to make you understand that actually we need to start changing about, the narrative. You don't want to make it about men and women. They're then women, both messed up on either side. Bad. Because then women look bad. No, because it's about everybody together. Women have Everyone, their traumas. Men have their traumas. I'm not here to fight against men and women. That's small. I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I but don't. the idea, the idea, the idea that this one percent of men have created this terrible society. Yeah, I talk about that. I talk about the Matrix. I talk about these things. But it's always been this way. It's always been a small elite group of men who are in charge of the world. And unfortunately, now we're fighting battles in different ways. The, 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 the days of old, a man proved his worth by going to war. Basically, every man at any point in his life was going to end up going to war. And he came back victorious. He came back with honor. He got himself a wife. That's, that's how it worked, right? Now men don't have to go to war as much, depending on where you live in the world. And it's slightly different. And we fight our wars in other ways. And one of the true expressions of testosterone and trying to really express your ability and your combative ability now in the, in the modern world is power and influence. So in the olden days, you go to war, you come back with a ribbon. Nowadays, you got X amount of followers. You can move the world with money. I can bend reality with money. Please understand, it's if true. I walk into Jimmy Choo, they lock the door. No brokies allowed in. Tate's here. And I buy whatever the fuck I want. There's lines outside because I'm there. Mm -hmm. I bend the world with money. That's how, I, that's how the wars are now won. So you're talking about high status males. and It's always <coughs> been that way. Now you have a whole contingent of men who aren't dead. Okay, they didn't die in a ditch, but they're lonely as fuck jerking off. And that's the reality of it. And, and women don't give a fuck about them. And why should you? I'm not sitting here actually shitting on women in any way. I think women have a biological instinct to a degree to try and find the best mate they can because it gives them the highest chance of survival and the harsh realities of the world. And if they look at a man who's not capable, they just don't feel an attraction to him. And that's the bottom line of it. And, and that's why I actually, most, I'm, I'm largely misunderstood. I don't blame women for a lot of the problems. Women are guilty of certain things, but I have a massive amount of blame to place on men because there's so many men who are genuinely incompetent. I, if I was a chick, I wouldn't fuck these losers either. Like, they're losers. So, uh, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Balance. It's hard. I love it. Do you know what I don't understand? Why people are always going for the 1%? All the women want to rush for the 1%. Why don't you just find a regular nine to five person that's going to look no. after you? You can be his queen. Why can't you just do that? Why is everybody really rushing? I've mm. got a man. We don't go on social media. If it weren't for Pella, I want no night about social media. Nine to five. I've got our own property. Thirty two years. Happy as Larry. What is the problem? It's oh. not old fashioned. It can. It works. No, Auntie. <laughs> let me clarify. When I meant one percent, is not the one percent of attraction. I mean the actual people that are in charge of the things that run the world the way that. What it I'm does. trying to say is that it's always been an umbrella we've lived under. But and the then difference the functioned is, underneath it. So why is it going to affect me? I'll explain why. Because as Sir Mr. Andrew King Tate said, I want to know what she's after. I'll have this one after this point. I want to know what she's after. Yeah. She's going to go home and, and <laughs> dry that now. Wait, wait, so it it is. I've been drinking lime juice as well. So mm. as he very rightly said, society has now evolved. Before men went to war, mm -hmm. now men don't go to war. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of sense of no purpose that they need to find. And then on the women's side is that the same way that a society evolved and made men feel less purpose, they have now had to take on bigger purposes. They have to go to work like they didn't have to do before. They have to take care of the family and work and do all of these things and now deal with the fact that men are feeling a little bit like out of, what you know. No, but she, no, what but she, she, the rubbish? That ain't what I'm saying. No. Oh, you, get well. a, you get a nine to five person, right? What is wrong with you going out there, find a regular nine to five person? Right? You can function underneath that. Because I'm always saying the women say, oh, we ain't got enough money. We ain't got enough money. Work with what the man's got. You're right. Work with what the man's got. You can make a man your alpha. Everybody wants to go and find these top earning money. Find a nine to five, work regular, save your money, learn to cook and not have takeouts, and then save your money as they did before. Then you should direct this to the men that feel upset it's because 
because they're not like Andrew Tate. There's always that written something to the man. No, but she's she's completely, completely right. I'll give you. I'll tell you this. There's not a girl on this panel or on the planet today who couldn't walk outside and find a man who's going to be nice to her, loyal to her, and make her his queen. Mm -hmm. Women don't want that. So they'll sit there and go, no, I want Chris Brown. And then they'll go try to get Chris Brown. Then Chris Brown will cheat. And they'll be like, I can't believe he cheated. I am devastated. Well, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? If I go to the car garage, right, you have to make a decision what you truly want in your life. If you truly want to just find a man who's going to look after you and take care of you, you're going to be his queen, he's going to be loyal. You can find that all day, but you're going to have to settle to a degree where a lot of women perhaps are not prepared to do that. Mm. You see the, You see how women act. They'd rather chase a fraction of a real G's time than have 100% of the time of a fucking dude who they don't who they don't respect at that level. And it's kind of like going to a car dealership. You walk in there, you, if, you, if you want reliability, you can get a Nissan. But if you want to get a Ferrari, it comes with it comes with headaches. It's going to come with problems. So when girls say to me, oh, you know what, Andrew, you know, you should be loyal. To Men like me don't have to be. And you know that. So why the fuck are you here trying to tell me what to do? Because you know I don't have to be loyal, and all the girls I'm fucking don't have to be loyal. So why are you sitting there pretending you expected me to be loyal when everyone knew from ground up day one it was never going to ever fucking happen? And you're still here. I think you're still gonna, texting. They're going to be the one that changes you. <laughs> or not. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> That's the biggest mistake that so girls who, make. <laughs> whose fault is this? This is the female decision. They sit there and decide. No, I want this, 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 this. Cool. Then you're going to have no, to accept. They, he ain't going to be loyal to you. He's barely going to reply to you. That's the case. <laughs> they like being cheated. I swear to God, this show has made me believe. I think women like to be cheated on. I don't. I, I swear to God. No, because all y'all ever talk about is your exes that cheated on you. That's all y'all ever talk about. And Ew. it's like, Who it's like, only that's talks the, about that. <laughs> the regular women that are on here. The women that uh, come on okay. the show. Oh, good thing I'm irregular and extraordinary. Yeah. But do you not think it's because we're not holding men accountable? So when a man, because he's a top G, cheats on a woman, it's like, well, what do you expect? When you should actually turn around to accountable him and say. Accountable for what? Account, accountable is, for okay, accountable cheating, for its natural evolutionary cheating, biology. Is cheating morally correct? Yes. It depends. Yes. How so can you okay, say? How can you okay. say that? Are you you're joking? okay with your woman cheating on you then? Absolutely not. That's around. No, because oh, it's around when she cheats on you, but you can cheat on her. There has not been in the history of humanity across any culture, any book, any story, any fable. There has never been across the history of humanity any respect put on the name of a promiscuous female ever. Ever. You name the biggest conquerors that you can possibly name from history. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, all of them. They all had a hundred wives, bunch of children, Big G, conquered the world. Normal. That is normal evolutionary biology. That's how men are designed to be. There's never been a single female who's been celebrated for a promiscuity ever in history. It's always been frowned upon and disgusting. So yes, we are completely and utterly different. Yes, it's different if a woman cheats on a man. And if a man is at a complete top level of his life and ticks every single box, and if he decides to be loyal, which some do... And I can be loyal, and I have been loyal, but there's also times in my life where I think, fuck it, I don't want to be, and get a new girlfriend every single day of the week. I can do that, and I can decide to do that. If a woman decides to do the same, purely because her value is high enough to attract so many males, because she's beautiful, for example, it is completely different. And I'm going to explain to you why it's completely different, so buckle up. It's hey. different. <laughs> it's different. Go. It's different. Well, I'll tell you why. Go it on, is Sandy. impossible for a female <laughs> to be promiscuous on a long enough period of time without devaluing herself. Because she is fucking people she shouldn't be fucking. There is no way she is sleeping with endless men, and all of them are either high-value men or treating her the way she should be treated. If you find a woman who slept with 50, 100 dudes, she's either fucking dudes which aren't at her level or haven't worked hard enough to try and get the pussy. She's just too drunk to realize he's a loser who plays video games. Or she's fucking a top G who barely texts her back. So either way, she's fucking dudes she shouldn't be fucking or a guy who's at the level who doesn't give her the right amount of attention. For a woman to find a guy who's truly on a level who truly treats her the way she should be treated, that's once every couple years, if that. You ain't just going to go out there fucking a new dude every week and say, yeah, he's worth pussy. Yeah, he treats me good enough to get my pussy. Da, da, da. And you know what's funny? about the universe it's actually beautiful about the universe because it's equal and opposite forces when you devalue yourself it's kind of like men can smell it on you mm. they can just look at a bitch and go oh Ugh. and that's yeah. the way it works so you have to be very careful as a female and sit and go does this man truly deserve to fuck me and if you think about it the answer 99 percent of the time especially if you're promiscuous is no so when a woman <laughs> is sleeping around with all these men she's devaluing herself she's devaluing herself and the world knows god knows the universe knows when a man does it he doesn't devalue himself at all that's just the way it works. Can that's I ask you a question? Problem. Wait, that's wait, the problem. wait, wait, Esther, one second. Sir, may I ask you a question? What would you say if a woman now is married to two men? Haram. Haram. Why? <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. Let's talk about this. Mm. What is the difference between a man, let's say me, I have four wives, right? What's the difference between a man having four wives and a woman having four men? You can impregnate the four wives at the same time. You can impregnate the four wives at the same time, and we know who the parents are. 
right? So yes. you, let's say you had four pregnancies. You'd know who the mother is because she's <laughs> carrying the baby, and you know who the dad is, top G. If you had a woman with four men and she gets pregnant, who's the, who's the parents? What about if... The, no, I'm asking. Okay, Do you know? I ask, what if they're different races? Answer white, the question. You don't Answer know. the question. You don't you know. Do. Now, modern science can come along and maybe fix that for you, but that doesn't mean it's not wrong in, in the eyes of God. The idea of having a family, the idea of a child being born, one of the baselines for a new life to come onto this planet is for at least to understand who the two people who made it are, at least. If you have a woman fucking four dudes, you don't even know who, who, who got her pregnant. So may I just it's say... disgusting. Wait, wait, have you, have have you seen the twins that had two different dads? Oh, that's oh yeah, I saw that. May I just say something then? So if that is the case, yeah, if the one thing that you're meant to have is you at least you know who the two people that put that child on earth are, then that's why promiscuity for men is also a problem because they get women pregnant. Sometimes they don't even know they have children. That's haram, no? No, it's completely different. It's different because you have to understand I'm talking about Humans. You look at humans from a societal perspective, and but society has changed, right? So let's say two, three hundred years ago, if a woman got pregnant, she needed a man to survive. If that man didn't take care of her during pregnancy, she was going to die. She couldn't mm. work a job, she couldn't hunt, couldn't fish, whatever, right? A woman literally needed that man for survival. So if if you were to come to me and say I'm pregnant, but you've been fucked by four different dudes, mm. I'd be like, who says it's mine? Why am I looking after you? None okay. of them want to look after her. She will literally perish. This is why in most of the world today. Still today, virginity is so coveted, and throughout all of history, it's been so coveted because that's the only way to ensure paternity. Mm -hmm. She's a virgin. I know that's my baby. She ain't a virgin. Prove it's mine. <laughs> Outside of this modern science bullshit, shaitan, the devil we have here in the West, <laughs> in most of the world today, without virginity or at least a low body count or at least uh, anti-promiscuity, you can't tell that that's your baby. So mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing. You're looking at the idea of a man, a woman being pregnant and coming to a group of men and saying, one of you has to take care of me and put up with me when I'm fat and moody <laughs> and annoying and I need my bills paid. And all the men are going to sit there and go, no, fuck no, prove it's mine. You can't prove it. Bounce. Where it's different. If I get four women pregnant, we know the, we know yeah. the deal. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So obviously back then for survival, women needed a man. Otherwise, when they were pregnant, they could die and all of these things, they would perish. In today's society, given evolution, given the fact that as women, we can you go still and get. Need men. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying that. Isn't there a glitch between what is actually happening and the nature of what we have in our bodies? I think that's probably the conflict that we're having right now. Glitch in what way? In the sense that women don't feel like they need men in the most physical sense, we, perhaps yeah, like right. naturally. It's, it's very interesting. Women don't feel like they need men in a physical sense because life is soft. But it's mm. but it's but it's bullshit, and it's bullshit because you still need men by proxy. One and two, the second life gets difficult. You very quickly you very quickly learn how much you need men. But women will go, "I'm an independent. I don't need no man because I have an OnlyFans and men pay my OnlyFans. And if anyone comes up to me, I'll call a male police officer. I don't need men. Shut up, you fucking idiot. Of course you do. Mm. You just named your whole life is based on fucking men. The road you're driving on was paved by a man. The house you're living in was built by a man. The car you're driving was, was designed by a man. Your whole life depends on men. And the second anything bad were to happen to you, the second you were physically threatened, or times were to get hard, or war were to start, or famine, or riots, the first thing you do is find a big, strong man, shit yourself, and throw the feminism out the window. Mm. Feminism goes out the fucking window the second that the snow needs shoveling, or there's a fucking broken down car, or the tire needs changing. Then all that crap vanishes. It's garbage. And this is the actual, the very interesting thing. I'll make a point here, which is going to get me canceled again, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, but, but this is the point. Feminism in and of itself can't be defended. Any idea, the point of an idea is that it can be defended by the people who believe in it. This has been the whole point of war since the dawn of time. It doesn't matter if it was the Christians against the Hindus. It doesn't matter if it was the Germans against the French. There were people who had ideas and ideologies, and they are prepared to fight each other to defend their ideology. Feminism is an ideology which cannot be defended by feminists. The only people who could defend feminism are the men who subscribe to the garbage. If, you, if all the feminists were to get in a, in, a, in a line and say, we want feminism, and the conservative men were to get in a line, you would learn very quickly it's bullshit. I had a friend in Afghanistan when Taliban kicked America out, and he told me the Americans were, tell, were telling the girls they could go to school. So they built all these girls' schools, and they put the Afghanistani defense forces there, and they get funded the Afghanistani defense forces to, to, to protect these schools. You had American satellites. You had night vision goggles. Taliban were afraid to attack. America leaves. Now you have Afghani defense forces. They're basically blind. They don't have satellites anymore. Don't have, don't have a night vision, whatever. So now it's a real war. The men are standing next to this girl's school. The Taliban are coming. You're some dude. You're standing there, and you're looking at this girl's school going, I don't really give a fuck if girls go to school. Bounce. And you just and you didn't fight. So that's why they all gave up, and Taliban took over so quickly. And when I said this, the girl's like, yeah, they should have fought for us, feminism. Why don't the women fight?
Can I ask? Oh, wait, the women can't defend their own fucking idea. You need men to defend feminism. So that's why the whole thing is stupid. Because <laughs> so, the second men don't defend it, it, does, it just fails as a fucking ideology. It's garbage. May I tell you something now? So this is the thing. This is when we <laughs> assume that women perhaps don't have the physical or even mental ability to go to assume. a war. Assume. Wait, wait, wait. Because this is the thing. For example, in Ukraine, a lot of women took up arms. And in fact, I'm Angolan. Wait, wait. I'm Angolan. Wait, wait, I'm Angolan. And don't lie listen, to the people at home. Wait, no worries. I'll talk about Never. my personal you wanna story. You want to go to war? You no, want to fight No, wait, the let lines? me tell you. Let me tell you something. This is the thing. I think it's also really, <laughs> like, silly to assume that, for example, a woman, because she didn't go to school, she'll not be as intelligent as a man. Therefore, naturally, a woman is not intelligent. No, it doesn't make sense. If we're now starting to normalize equality and we want to put everybody in the forefront, give a woman a Who's gun. Who's normalizing equality? Well, that's what, what people are wanting. Then that, that's people the case. Like who? Let me tell you, Who auntie, wants to normalize equality? People like, oh, feminists. Who no, else wants to? I want, well, actually, no equality. I want respect. That's really Yo, what I want. What's stopping you from getting respect? Exactly. No, no, I get respect. I, I, get respect. Get respect. I get respect. So, that's what I want. That's what I like. Respect. What I think is... You don't even know what you want. I'll tell you what I you want. Don't know what you want. You want I, equality, as a woman, I carry myself differently. I actually hold the things that I have done in the fights that I fought. I hold it. That's why when you speak to me, I don't move different. I move different to many of the girls. That's why when you talk to me and you argue with me, I, I don't, don't take it. You do sometimes. And I'll tell you something. A lot of women may have the accolade to be somebody, but they are uncomfortable to own that. And the reason why, then I would like to ask you, for example, um, I do need a, woman, a man, for example, to, you know, procreate. But other than that, I'm quite strong. And I would find things, I would find a way to protect myself differently. It, with that mentality, Denava, what would be Denava, the man that would be for me then? Denava, Denava, what would you do if one of these security guards broke into your door? <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> okay, you, I'll tell what you. What would you do? What would One, you do? No, no, seriously, there's no guns she's, here. She's a feminist. I'll she's tell you. No, I'm not a she feminist. She was straight and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a feminist. I'm, I'm a bit smarter. Okay, Either okay. I'd play no, dead. One. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay, they see you're not dead. Uh, it's okay. They, they no, I'd be breathing. like this. And then if not, maybe I would kind of like be very gentle and comply to find a way to get out okay, of it. So if they want to come and an, kill me, let's make an there's not much point. that many people but can do. But let's make an important point. You're talking about equality equaling respect. The way you get respect as a woman is by being feminine. There's nothing... Uh, we can be equal and very, very different. I'm not saying that there's not equality, but you've confused equality with the same. You can be equal equity. with completely different things. You can have a bishop and a knight on a chessboard. They're equal in terms of points, but they do different things, right? Mm -hmm. A woman can have equal respect to a man if she is very good at being a woman, and a man gets respect for being very good at being a man. When a woman decides she wants to act like a man or a man wants to act like a woman, that's where it all gets fucked up. We try to pretend yes. it's all the same. It's not the same. Men and women are good at different things. We have different strengths, different weaknesses. There's nothing wrong with accepting that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm a woman, I'm good at X, he's a man, he's good at Y. Then we work together as a team, we have a beautiful family, we're happy forever. It's only confused where you have women who sit and go, no, because in the name of equality, we can fight and work. There's no fucking women on the front line in Ukraine. That is psyop bullshit. They put some chick there dancing around doing Pokemon <laughs> dances to try and convince men to yeah, go fucking die in a ditch. It's garbage. If you go to the front line of Ukraine right now, you do not see women in their makeup and their manicures. You see fucking men in the freezing cold dying. You know where the women are? Dubai. Chilling. That's where the women are. So mm. to sit and pretend that women are just as capable physically as men is a fucking lie. It's delusion. To send that you're as strong as men is a delusion. You are good no at way. other things. You're better than men at a lot of things, but it's not the physical world. And the unfortunate reality about life, this is what we're saying when I was saying earlier that feminism goes out the window when things get hard. The harder the world gets, it, the, it, the closer it gets to the baseline of humanity, the unfortunate baseline of, rea of, re of humanity is violence. Yeah. That's what happens. when, if, if all the electricity were to go out and all the police were to quit, this would become a violent place very quickly, and there would be fucking zero feminists left. Zero. You would all need <laughs> men. That's the bottom line of reality. That's the bottom line. So you have to yes. understand as a woman and say, okay, no I need a man who's good at being a man. But no but, one's saying but, that we don't need men in society. Of course we do. We're talking about relationships. Yeah, you're strong. But the thing is, I can live my life as a woman and not need a man. What's a woman? Uh, <laughs> I am, oh, Pearl, stop like, it. Like, in my, in my day to day life, I don't need a man to fix my car. I'll just go to the mechanic. But listen, right? I'm but, yeah. but is the mechanic a man but, or a woman? No, no. I'm saying, yes, we need men in society, but in relationships, the only reason I actually need you is because I want you. I don't actually need you. Do you know what? I, I, want, I, need, I need you to procreate. Yes, I agree. But the things, I don't need you in my day to day life. What if, what if someone, but wait, what, wait, what if someone breaks into your house? I'll just call the police. Okay, what if they don't come? 
What if it, the average is play in, the US, in the U.S. It takes like 15 <laughs> and give them everything. In, in the fifth in, in the U.S. It takes like 15 that minutes is, for them to get there. But that's not realistic. What? That okay, doesn't okay, happen no, on okay, a okay, day-to-day okay, okay. life. These wow. two guys in your in your house. What are you doing? But that's not realistic. I've not had any man break into my house on no, a day-to-day. No, it doesn't the happen. Point, the point is. So let's be realistic I know, I know what now. I, I know what you're saying, but the the point is this. The point is. When we're talking about feminism as a whole, feminism as a whole demonizes men. And you just said, you just sat and said, besides procreation, I don't need a man in my life. I can go to a male mechanic or call a male police officer. They're men. So it's it, in it's, society, it, so, you yeah, are needed. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay, of so, course, so, we of, need you. Of course. So you're talking about being with a man because you want to. So yeah. my, my question to you is, why would you want to be with a man? Why would a man want to be with you? Because they're sexy. Like, I feel like because of the <laughs> they, no, 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 guys, and can we just talk about legs. men? Sorry, I love men. No, I love dick. We don't okay? sound like it, but it's not all about dick. What I'm trying to say is no, that uh, in mm. a good relationship, right, one that works, there's blue jobs and there's pink jobs. <laughs> right, and that's the problem that women have got. Oh, gee, they don't want to be doing no pink jobs. But that's not you know what, what we're talking about. We're, we're, talking, talking, about. we're talking about relationships. Why do you need a man in a relationship? Because you want a partner. What about companionship, partner? friendship, you want romantic love, love, things romantic, that you can't get yeah. by yourself. Take, like, you want to go on dates with him. It's not about, I need someone to fix my car. Like, go to a mechanic. <laughs> You're not safe? Call the police. Not like, true. it's not that okay. right. what about, what about, Wait, wait. What about a father to your kids? You don't think your exactly. kids are needed? Exactly. You can be around. I, I definitely want that. These are the stuff. This is the reason wait, no, why you need, need a man. That. That's and, not, and I agree. Not, wait, wait, wait. It's not, it's not that you want it. You need it. I agree. And these are the stuff that I need needing a man but it's like at the end of the day it's not like i completely need you but, like, but, I want the whole, you. but the whole point mm. is if the lights went out tomorrow you would need a man in There's society no, agree why do we have like women are so no, 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 useless I'm saying, it's I'm not saying, that i can change a no, tire no, i'm saying i'm <laughs> saying if if the lights went out tomorrow you would need someone to protect you you yes, would. of course. Can in I society, say? not my boyfriend. I'll go on the ground. Like, half of my exes can't even do anything. Can I, well, yo, <laughs> That's choice. actually another problem. Choice. A lot of men can't do much. Do you know what I mean? Not everybody in this day strong. and age, in this day and age, guys can't even Listen, fit a tire. You, <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot. <laughs> no, no, no. Can't cook. Not true, my sister. But I can cook. I can cook. And the thing is, I'm not even. Speak to your brothers. They don't know how to do nothing. I'm not even saying. Guys, 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 guys. Can I just say something? We have to do one at a time. Can I just say something? This is why. You can't blame all men for your poor choices. You can't say, I'm talking to both of you because you are saying, yeah, my man can't do this. My man can't <laughs> do that. What, and you want to settle down. Why would you go and choose a man that can't do these things that you wanted them to do? Because my man could do all the blue I jobs. I need a man Because most men grow up with a PlayStation instead. Most men grow up with a PlayStation and porn and things. Yeah, it's not, no, it's that's it's the it's truth. It's not. It's speak not. For, speak for yourself. Speak for that's yourself. The, that's you Listen, I'll tell you what, sorry, I don't need a mechanic for my boyfriend. You know what? I need a father to my children. I don't need... You know something, right? She needs a police officer. She needs a father for her children, right? So she's going to go out there, right? And you're going to buy your child an electric car. You're going to go and buy your child a bicycle. Who the hell is going to put the bicycle and fix the electric car. Who's going to do it? You got YouTube. I know how to do these Bro, things. I, I fixed the Bentley before. Why I fixed the Bentley. And you can do everything yourself. Go and get some sperm donor or something because you obviously don't need a man. Because That's the future, I, I think. And the thing you know? is, no, the future for who? No, of That's like the society. Problem. Because at the end of the day, what year are you living in? The year that you are supposed to be living in. in. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. Let me finish talking. Let me finish talking, right? Now, you can. You got a man, right? And you've been busy all day, right? And you're in your bed at one o'clock in the morning. And your man comes in with all of his friends and said, oh, babes, all the friends are here. They're hungry. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'll cook for my man. I, I'm, I'm a traditional woman in that aspect. Uh, yeah, in I love aspect? to cook Why for my man. Why is it that when people are, start are you, cooking, they think that cooking is traditional. It's, it's everything. It's not just about cooking. But they always say, wait, 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 I, question, I cook I for my question, man, so I'm question, traditional. I have a no, 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 no. But question. the point I have, is... Wait, wait, wait. I, wait, I have a question. Are you a virgin? You're traditionally a virgin. Are you a virgin? I, no, no, I, I, said, okay, I'm virgin. I said in that aspect, I'm not going to comment on me being a virgin or not, but what I'm going to say is, Every every human being should be able to cook. She's a Man she's a hybrid woman. of tradition and modernization. I'm a person that survives. You know, I need to cook to, to right. survive. Can, can I can I ask Mr. Take something? Right, right. I'm gonna ask you something. Sure. <laughs> right, because I, I I can't I don't like bullshit. Right, and like, there's not certain people that I can't Why even say so talking to. Right, so I'm gonna talk to him because so far he's talking sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's You're given welcome. pick me. Right. Uh-uh. No, Who said pick me? Listen, who just said pick they me? They want me. Don't look no, at me. Did, did I, said, I said it's give it, 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 it,
me. Give him because we're having a listen, whole conversation. Right? Listen, right? Like, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to Mr. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I've been with my man for 32 years. Clap for yourself. 32 years. I don't need to clap for myself because I'm happy. I'm not here. And what I was going to ask him, right, is how would you think a woman? Would you think that woman? Would you think that woman? Who's calm down? I'm, I'm, I'm loud. I'm naturally, you don't want to hear me shout. Anyway, Mr. Tate, like I was saying before we got rudely interrupted, right? Now, if you, is this your idea of a woman that you think deserves a man? I'm here, single, but I'm, I'm looking. I'm here, I'm, I'm like taking, you know, if you want to hook me up, let me know. And I just want any and anybody, but choose. How does that make you feel? Uh, what is that kind of woman that you think deserves a man? Well, he's a top G. You can't be asking him this question. But you're about top mere G, mortals. Isn't it? We're mere mortals, Auntie. Speak for yourself. I'm no mere mortal. I'm a mere mortal in his presence. <laughs> because nobody, nobody Come on now. Me. Which I kind of question be that? Auntie, unlike you, we have options. I'm a mere mortal. Unlike you, man, we have options. Even this 8.5. If you don't have options, where's your ring? That is the most stupid thing. Because I have options. Because I actually can choose. I've not found a man that I want to be with. Okay, that's the point. I know you're reality. I know your stop, reality stop, is you've got to beg a man to give you. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You said, unlike you, yeah. I have options. We have options, yeah. You're out here looking for a man. You're out here saying that you're looking where, for a where man. Where did I say I was looking for a man? Oh, my gosh. You was at the advertising when we done the introductions. I That's what you said. I said I was doing it. That interviews. is what you said. I didn't say I was going out oh looking for a man. God. I said I'm doing it. Hang on a minute. So you come to me. I'm going to decide if I want you. Mr. Tate. Listen, listen, to, listen to this insult, right? Listen to the insult. <laughs> I'm not insulting listen. you. Hang on. Listen. Oh, I'm then what do you call it? You. Sign language. What I'm learning. Sign language. <laughs> right? Listen to what she just said to me. Unlike you, I have options. Fucking 32 years. Do you think I want options? It's I'm happy with my it's man. Giving, you don't mean have much options, though. Because the way no, you're like, it's oh, not pick me, auntie, auntie. Okay, okay. It, it, oh, she meant clout. Like, wait, wait. Giving, like, she meant, she meant. Chosen so bad, Esther, I'm quick. sure you didn't mean pick me. You meant clout chaser. Oh, is that what it is? It doesn't matter. matter. We could go with that too. I'm sorry. Matter. I was just trying to clarify your problem. Matter. I there was just no saying. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Because years so, like, I've totally just, lost it. Just, Why would I want to have options when I've been in a happy relationship for 32 years? No, clout chasers is fans. It don't make no sense. I just. Just, you can monetize I'm, on YouTube just, with clout. Why, why are you calling her a pick me when you were the one advertising at the beginning of the show? I said I'm doing interviews. I wasn't advertising okay. nothing. Okay. It's banter. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Do you okay, guys okay, understand okay. what an okay. interview means? Okay. What, what, right, what right. you She's right. being so, spicy, guys. So, Stop so, it. Auntie had a question for Andrew. Oh, yeah. What was your question? Oh, no, she I asked already. He didn't answer because everybody's too busy jumping. Don't ask your question. Everybody's too busy jumping in. I already asked, but you're not too busy jumping in and being women. He's to be, patient. To be listening. So He's now ready you, to get now married. Now you can all shut up and let him answer, innit? I'll, I'll answer, yeah. So, so to, to go back to one of my earlier points, firstly, to make it clear in the disagreement, I agree with, of course, I think everyone knows who I agree with. But um, I do, because you know what it is, though? You know what's actually funny? The things that she's saying our common knowledge 20, 30 years ago. This is how the world functioned. This is how the whole world functioned. The things I say that somehow people believe are controversial are exactly the way the world functioned in like the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. All of the entire period of human history, men had a role of masculinity. Women had a role of femininity. We worked as a team. Now the world's come along and they've destroyed and broken everything. And there's this new progressive think and this new generation of women who seem to believe that if we completely fuck it all up, it's going to end up better. And my argument to that is, listen, we went from walking around in fields and small nomadic groups to building cities, to building the pyramids, to going to the moon. We managed to go from a few thousand to billions of people, populate the entire planet, build canals, build skyscrapers, cities. All of this was done based on the back of man being a man, woman being a woman, working together as a family. And now, now it's destroyed. Now, now they're going to come along. And fuck it up. If it's not broke, don't it's fix destroyed. it. It's destroyed. It's been destroyed. Man has destroyed earth. What are you talking about? It's no. been bad decisions men from powerful men, men that men got men, men to go men to wars built, and from earth. women to lose husbands. Men, men built Men earth. make decisions for war. Listen, please. Men kill men. Please listen to me. Men built the earth. I'm not saying men are perfect, but the entire world that you're existing under was built by men. Yeah, it's All true. of it. So, so, and the point I'm making is now we're entering a world of new think. And that the problem with new think is it's not tested. I don't give a shit what anyone's opinion is. What I can state as a matter of fact is we had 5,000 years of history that tells us how the world works with X and Y together. Mm -hmm. We're now entering a new paradigm. There's no 5,000 years of history. So whatever you believe about how it's going to work or it's going to be better or worse, whatever, that's just you guessing. Everyone is guessing, right? So we're entering a brand new paradigm and everything's completely <laughs> fucked up. 
the point you were making earlier, which is a, it's a fantastic one about if I pick a woman who's advertising, et cetera, et cetera. Men always, please keep this in mind, if you're, especially if you're a female. People always say, you know, the number of emails I get from girls will say you don't give enough girl game. I'll give you girl game right now. <laughs> Your man wants status. That's what he wants. You need to find a way to make him look good to the world and to his friends. If, so how do you do that? I'll tell you. One of the ways a man can get status is to get the girl that no one can get. That's a very imp- simple way, right? So I said not ready to mingle. I did right. Okay, no, no, but this is the truth, right? If, you, if I date a girl and she's perfect in every way head to toe, and then I'd say, oh, I've met this girl. Yeah, she's this, she's this. Oh, yeah, I took her for a date. Even if he didn't fuck her. Did you fuck her? No, no, I just went for a date. So you went, the, it, the attraction mm. goes from this to zero. Done. And it may not for some men, because some men haven't got choices, but men like me who genuinely have unlimited options. We want complete exclusivity. That's what we're looking for, because that gives status. That's mm. what you're looking for. So you have to be very careful as a female with all of your actions, all of your interactions with your boyfriend or when you're looking for a boyfriend, et cetera, and say, Am I going to make my man look better by doing X or look worse? Simple things. I've had endless arguments about girls' nights out, right? Oh, you're insecure. Da, da, da. It's not even about insecure. I don't give a fuck if no man talks to you all night long. I don't care if you're going out and you're going to an all-girl club. I don't care. I know that when my boys say oh, all the girls are going out and I say, not my girl, she stays home. I look good. That's, that's it. That's she stays home. She doesn't, go out. She, doesn't wa- she doesn't want to go out without me. That's status. It's not about the night out. It's about the status of being the man in the house. That's what a man wants. He wants respect. He wants to be the man of the house. I say she stays home. She stays home. Big G. Boom, boom. That's what we want. Can I ask you something? What about what does the, the, the woman want in your eyes? What do you think? And what's the game you get for the boys? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you. But before that, I need another Clementine. And I need to give half to our friend here because <laughs> she just rolled her eyes at me. And I'm perspicacious. I notice everything. She doesn't realize that I'm a ninja. <laughs> I detect these things. Even when I'm looking directly ahead, I can detect it. So That's I'm going to give her some of my Clementine. And she's going to feel better. So I'm going to get a clementine. <clears throat> would you like some clementine, my dear? I'm sure. You want some I d- clementine? I just, I think for me, it's like. This I, is... I asked you a question. Would you yeah, like some I would love some. Yeah. You want some clementine? Yeah. We're going to hook it up. Okay. Clementine's coming. All right. Go on. Continue. Okay. What? No, I mean, I just feel like this is definitely a different conversation for me because I, I'm very open-minded. I love hearing different <laughs> perspective. And I do feel like. Um, this is a newer idea. Like like you said, within the last 30, 40 years, this is a new concept. We don't know how it's going to end. I just know from, from like my experience, other women that I've met as well, it's like the reason for even like relationships, why they're not lasting is because people don't want to put up with the disrespect. And like, even when you were talking about like, oh, it's okay for me to cheat, but not for you. My thing is, is like, why not have transparency and have it be polygamous, poly, uh, polyamorous, whatever works for you. That's like, to me, where it loses me with the traditional stuff. I get it. It's All like, right. why can't we have so, transparency? Okay. And if I sign up for that, cool. So how does it, no, okay, no, no man, <laughs> no man in a million years, let's all be realistic, right? No man in a million years is going to fe- meet a girl he likes and go, I want to be polyamorous. Like, come on, that's gay. Let's cut this bullshit. So let's, let's be realistic. How does a man show love to a woman? Tell Exclusivity. Me. Wrong. That is how time, people, resources, wrong. and something else. Time, resources. So yeah. that's a good, that's a good way to start. So sexual exclusivity is how a female shows primarily, primarily that she's interested in a man. He's mm. the only man who has sexual access to me because I can get pregnant and I, I, this man is the only man who can do it. That's how it's done. A man, yes, I'm not saying all men can cheat. I'm not saying all men should cheat. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if I truly love a woman, she won't sit there and go, he shows me his love because he doesn't fuck anyone else. She'll sit there and go, he shows me his love because my bills are paid. I'm in a Bentley. I drive, fly private. I go to Dubai anytime I want. I have a Chanel bag. That I, and I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about resource and a lifestyle as a whole. This is not just me. This is the world and most of the world today. If you go to Moscow and you find a, a big G, a rich guy, right? He has his wife. She's pushing a Bentley. She has the kids. She's living in a mansion, whatever. When he goes to the club with his boys, you think he ain't with 19-year-old strippers? Of course he fucking is. Can I ask but you? she's just like, whatever, don't care. I'm the one who has the money. Don't give a shit. So you have to sit there, and to a point, you have to sit and analyze the the, the difference. When you're saying disrespect, if you're gonna if you're gonna go through life as a woman and say I only care about the sexual exclusivity of my man, then what you're gonna end up doing is having a bunch of failed relationships and fucking loads of dudes. Okay. There has to get a point where you go, you know what? This guy ticks so many boxes. Once a year, twice a year, he's out with his boys, does some dumb shit. I'm just going to pretend I didn't notice because my bills are paid. I'm looked after. He, I can tell he cares about me. If I have a problem, he's going to fix it. He's ticked so many. That's the smart female move as opposed to go, I don't care how good he is to me. He fucked that bitch once, so I'm going to leave, and I'm going to get another man who I don't love who will fuck another bitch anyway, and then I'll get another man who I don't love who will fuck another bitch. So end the cycle of dumb shit. Can I, I, have, I, have, I have, the have, I have, I have but a The more mild examples, though. Way, way. I have a question. Is there ever cheating that's too far? 
<laughs> like, so if a guy cheats on a girl, is there ever a point where she? Yeah, like, there's a lot of cheating. There's completely a lot of cheating. So, like, far. if he if he knocks up another girl, would you? Compl- say it's too all right, far? all right. So, yeah. f- first things first. I'm a man of my word. I don't even think I'm a liar. So here's your Clementine. <laughs> Thank you. And he peeled it. What a gentleman. Thank you. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> right. So obviously, I'm not saying blatantly disrespect your woman. Right. She's your woman. She's your queen. She's the most important thing in the world to you. She needs to be treated in a way that she feels that. Right. But it's unfortunate because I keep tying back to this baseline point. But the reason I keep going back to this baseline point is to try and explain to everybody at home how simple world the world can be if you go back to the baselines of it. Why do men cheat? Most women don't know. You'll see them all the time. Why do men cheat? Oh, because men are just stupid. And why do men fuck girls uglier than their main chick? Why do men do all this stuff? Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Let's go back to the first thing I've been saying this whole time. Status. Yeah, that's my chick. She's home. Took this one home. Yeah, I got that one. She's chasing me. That's status. Dead. Status. Status. But it's but it, it's stupid to females. I get it. But that's the male world because sexual access is an easy indicator of status. So that's one of the reasons they do it, right? So you have to go back into the baseline of why men even cheat in the first place. I'm telling you, if you're a woman, the smartest thing you can do is look after your man. Make him not want to cheat. Be perfect. But there's going to be a time across a 20-year marriage you might just need to be a little bit blind. A little bit. Just a tiny bit. Just don't look at his phone. So and you'll be cool. Is, so, you'll be so, cool. So, just make sure the bills are paid. He does his jobs to man. What now, if I'm you can saying, pay your own bills, but, but no, though? Saying, but this is it. We'll talk about that in a second. But I'm not saying allow this for some fucking Joe Schmo. I'm not saying let some fucking loser pick you up, lock you down, and go cheat on you. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if he's a G and he's doing enough of his other jobs. As for you saying, what if you can pay your own bills? Then, then what's the reality you face? Just like I described earlier, I'm going to decide that the thing that I prioritize above everything, above his resource, above the amount he cares for me, you'll see men cheat on a woman and then cry his eyes out trying to get that woman back. He still loves you. It's not the same as if you cheated. He loves you with all his heart. He'd die for you. He'd take a bullet for you and he'd still fuck that bitch. doesn't matter. It's a different game for men, right? So you're sitting there going, well, I don't, I'm going to prioritize his sexual exclusivity over all of his other, cal- all of his other attributes. You're just going to end up having endless failed relationships fucking too many dudes yeah. and then what's going to happen is your psychology is going to break because females don't like to accept the fact that if you sleep with enough men and you get rid of the stigma around a new dick your instant answer is constantly new dick ah he didn't text me today fuck it someone else ah he was rude to me fuck it I'll cheat ah he was this I'll get a new boyfriend and then you end up just jumping on cock all day and you're fucking done you need to the, the reality is there has to come a point where you get a guy and he ticks boxes and you're like you know what I'm wifey I got the Bentley he does whatever he does but my bills are paid that's so it. When when would you say when would you say it's too far? I'm I'm just curious if there's a line that you would like if he spends money on another girl if he like when does it okay that's a good and, question. And other second question: Do you think that men ever fall in love with side chicks? Very good question, and this is a long and in depth answer, but it's a good question. Let me peel my Clementine. But um no, but it's a good question. Where is too far? I think publicly disrespecting is too far. So like you'll you'll notice. Let's take the Moscow G. All right, let's take an oligarch, a billionaire from Moscow. He has his wife. He has the girls he's in the club with. The girls he's in the club with wouldn't fucking dare message his wife. They wouldn't dare step out of line. Like, they know their place, right? So if there's a hierarchy and they know their place, that's one way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Spending money on a girl, sh- certainly, yeah, because men show love primarily through our, through our hard work. Not just through our resource, but through our hard work. If you take a man who's not particularly rich, he shows his wife love by getting up every day. Going to work, 9 to 5, working his ass off and paying those bills. That's how he shows love. That's why he does it for his wife and his children. Most men are out here working bullshit jobs, carrying trash. They're doing that to show love. So show, giving money, yeah, that would be a far more scary indicator than just sex. Let me give you all an example. I don't know if you all know my history, but I used to run a webcam business a long time ago. Don't want to talk about it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I had a bunch of girls who used to sit online and talk to guys, and they had laptops, right? This is a long time ago. And I used to sit and say to some of the webcam girls, I'd say, This man who is sitting in and logging in every night and sending you money every day and telling you he's obsessed with you from the other side of the world and missing out on time with his family to sit here and talk to you and send you money, that is more cheating than if he just went out and banged something. If he went out and banged something and came home, then done. But he's sitting here giving you his time, his money, his affection. That's cheating for a man, for a man to sit there and give money and time away, right? So you have to stop this idea of sexual exclusivity. Yes, that's for females. That's how females show their love to men. It's not (laughs) how high status, at least, males show their love to females. And and anyone who wants to disagree with me, call me wrong, call me misogynist, whatever bullshit, look at a history book. Every king, every sultan, every conqueror, every emperor, Every night, mm. all of them, all of them had maidens, wives, all of them. That's, that's history. What level of so, G do you have to be to be allowed to cheat? 
Well, oh, no, no. It's not about even being allowed to cheat. I'm not even <clears> saying that. And it also depends on the partner you're with. I'm not trying to sit here and advocate for men to run around and fuck a bunch of women. I'm not saying that. That's I'm what you're doing. No, but I'm not. No, no, no. no let him explain. Okay. Let him land. Let no, him land. It's about okay. to come. Now, watch this. Let him land. No, but I'm not. I, I'm not. What I'm actually trying to do is describe the baseline unfortunate realities of human dynamics. Mm. And, and I'm trying to explain now to the world that any woman can get a man who will not cheat on her if she's prepared to sacrifice a bunch of other things, perhaps, right? In the olden days, it was different. The world was a different place. It was a completely different place, and it was better. Now it's all fucked up. It's fucked up on every level. And men, especially the high-status men, most of them have struggled so hard to become high-status. They've been through so much shit to get where they are. It's like telling him, if you climb this mountain, you can go to a candy store. And he climbs to the top of the mountain, and the second he's in the candy store, after one piece of candy, that bitch is saying, no, no more candy. He's like, no, I just climbed this mountain. I just got rich. I just went through X, Y, Z. I finally got here. I'm finally in the candy store. Now you're telling me I can only have one piece of candy? Okay. What man's going to do that? Do you, do, you think, do, you think, do you think that men owe a woman loyalty if she was there from the beginning? Absolutely. They absolutely owe that woman lo loyalty. Oh, sorry, sexual loyalty. That's what I meant. Sexual, hey. sexual exclusivity yeah, yeah. is different. Men, sorry, I mean, sexual exclusivity and loyalty are completely disconnected for males. Nobody wants to talk about this, but it's the unfortunate reality is true. I'm telling you, you can get a man, he can go on a holiday, can fuck some stripper, can come home, and you can lie detector test him. Do you love your wife? Would you die for your wife? Would you take a bullet for your wife? That it, he'll pass the lie detector test. He loves her with all his heart. He'd do anything for her. It's just, it's just pussy. It's not okay. a big deal. It's but different. I, I feel like, I guess my question would be then is like, how do you view sex? Because I, I like... Sex at the end of the day is spiritual unification. I feel like I've gone through a lot of different stuff. I've had a lot of different experiences where I did not value myself. So I never had a man that valued me. So it's like, yeah, you rack up guys and guys you shouldn't be texting back or whatever. But I feel like there, I understand that there is a difference with how men view sex and how they move around in the world. But it's like, Sex is a sacred thing, no matter a male or female is doing it. So that's why for me, like my biggest, like the hardest for me to understand is like, this is such a, a, a sacred thing. And it's just being, it's like a, taking a piss for a guy. Can I, can I just say something? You sure you weren't making love to somebody that was having sex? I'm sorry? You weren't, you sure that you weren't making love to somebody with, that was just having sex? A and T, that's a nice, that's Have I, in there. No, th that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like as women, they make love mm -hmm. to men that are just having sex. Right. That's but the that, difference. That's not the point. But, but my make. thing is, okay. But I think, no, but I think, so I think when men hear that, though, it's like if it was sacred to you, you would have waited till you were married. But it's and like, I, I got, right. No, I yeah, get, I get yeah. that. But the, the reality is, is that the world is not so black and white. So I understand that there are these things in place that worked and made sense and now we're approaching an era that like we don't know what's going to happen but there's gray area you've had sex i've had sex she's had sex we've had sex with different guys mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we're damaged goods we're used goods i understand status is a big part of that i understand yes. that sex is viewed differently mm -hmm. but i feel like you should not if you're if you're looking at face value, I can understand why you would be judged from your past. Mm -hmm. But if if I'm a guy interested in you, I don't care about what you've done. But, 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 no, but no, that's the thing. Like, the, the, like men, men do though. That that's the thing. Like like a, a virgin's more valuable to a man than a girl that's had sex with multiple men. Like it just is what it is. There's a limit. Uh, There's a but uh, yeah. the modern man's solution even, is even, not even, a virgin. A modern man needs a partner, somebody that's okay, actually some, look smart look and can it, survive in the world of today. But I'm saying the men with and the that's going to be a lived woman. Most, the men with the most choice are going to pick women that are more pure in general. The ones that are already like, self-made, I guess so. But that's the thing. The reality too, is, like. the reality is that there's a lot of men out there, especially in the world that we live in today, that need a partner. So it's time for those masses of men to start respecting women for the role they can play it's, in their I lives. Don't, I don't think I don't do, think average men expect women to be virgins. Do you know what it virgins. is? Do you know what it is? <laughs> but it's this rhetoric that actually then is pumped into these minds and creates what people are now complaining about the misogynistic world. No, do you know that's what it is. And even in schools, it's, be, it's like permeated it, it through it all and perpetuated. Why is it misogynistic for men to prefer, prefer women that are more? It's pure. not that it's, but it's not that's not the problem the problem is now listen the maths is very simple you've got people like andrew tate talking about these things with such clarity and it makes so much sense because it is true 
right? And then you have men that are in these situations where just average, working an average job, and they cannot fulfill whatever definition is called to be a man in these Yes, definitions. they can, and that's no, what he said. He did no. say that. Yes, they can. <laughs> no, uh, a nine-to-five man can do it. But then again, but wait, wait. This is the thing. What we're talking about as a man, and this is why I say it's very important for us to understand the person that we're speaking to, and I'm very glad that you clarified everything that you mean. Not every man is like Andrew Tate. Not every man is going to be able to even realistically demand for certain things from a woman. So the same way, way women need to compromise if it comes to a man who is going to cheat on her because he's a top G, is the same way men are going to have to compromise and stop you know, blabbing man, about purity yeah, yeah, man, when they can't demand for that. Right? You, know, you, you, no. you didn't get none of what you were saying. I made my point. That was the whole point. Duh. Duh. That, what point? Well, duh. Because you just quoted him. You just said about no. his thing and you didn't... No, know. only you like a I made my point. I said the average man does not have what it takes to demand for a virtual... He already said that. He already said and that. And I reiterated you know in my own is? words for my own content, for my page. And do you so know what? what it is, right? Uh? Is that too many women, they see regular guys and they feel they're settling. You're not settling. You're getting what you deserve. But you can't be asking well, you're not for a virgin, though. Do you know you're not settling. You can't. But the difference is men know this. Like, most average men aren't demanding. The average men know what they want. Kind of. But the difference but that's is the different. Wait, 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 wait. The difference is average men know they don't deserve a 10. They know they don't deserve an 8. They know they don't even deserve a 7. And they still and go the messaging them on the stories and all this dumb stuff that is just ugly. Most men in history haven't even reproduced. And so it's like men know, but we the women are the ones that are delusional. There's That's regular men Lizzo out there. There's regular men out there. Shooting a shot at Chris Hemsworth. There's Chris Ooh. Hemsworth. There's regular men out there that <laughs> yeah, will that will have you down. Two, a two. Yeah, but can I just say, people are I watching Tate, I I not that. understanding that Tate is part of that one percent of How good you but, but and thing. they think but that they can demand the same thing. No, no, they, they can okay. demand well, purity. They, but one second, one second, one second. Sorry, sorry. I understand the point you're all making, but let's understand something. To the sexual marketplace, females have always been, and still to a degree, are the gatekeepers. It's men will, you can think about it in a very simplistic way. This is not the case, but let's simplify it for the sake of argument. Imagine men will run around and fuck anything, and women are the ones who say yes or no. You are the gatekeepers that have all the power. And this is what's actually truly interesting about the sexual marketplace, because whenever women go, there's not enough good men, nah, 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 then why are you fucking, of course, why would they be good if you don't make them be good? You're fucking losers. So, that's true. That's so, a good point. So, women, so you're talking about, I'm saying that you know, a man at a certain level can't do certain things. Da, da, da. If you were with Joe Schmo and he wasn't treating you the way you believe Joe Schmo should treat you, then why are you with leave. him? Leave. Sis, leave. Like you women, women have the gatekeeping. So if you get Joe Schmo and he treats you like you're, you're his queen and treats you perfect, good. If you get a fucking guy at the absolute upper echelons of value and, and you still don't aren't happy with what he's giving you, then leave. Women are the gatekeepers. You women actually have all of the power. This is what's beautiful to, about the whole thing. Yeah. Women are constantly complaining. You have all the power. You're the ones who get to choose. Do you know who you should be mad at for all this shit? I'll tell you who you should be mad at. Do you know who threw away all the female power in the sexual marketplace? Promiscuous females. Because now you got chicks. Who will bang anybody without trying? So why should a dude get up and try? No, Do you, you have any no, idea no. how hard it is to actually be? Let me make this clear. Go on, sir. Do you have any idea how hard it is to actually be, no bullshit, a man? And I say this and women go, oh, yeah, dude, that a... As soon as most women encounter any kind of problem, the first thing they do is turn to a man. <laughs> their man, their dad, the mechanic, the police, a man. If you actually put a woman in front of a problem and go, no men, they're like, oh, shh, whoa, fuck. They're, it's a mental breakdown. Men, day after day, especially if you're a high-level man, let me make it something clear from my life. I'll talk about from personal experience. I'm not just looking after me. I'm not just looking after my chick. I'm the guy in about 300 people's phone books that they call when anything big goes wrong. You get arrested in Russia, you need extraction from Ukraine, you need a million dollars, whatever it is, Kazakhstan, abduction, they call me. I'm the first phone call. I'm fixing 400 different lives. I'm a problem solver. Chicks can't fix fucking any of this shit, right? This is how hard it is to be a man. And it's amazing because society expects it of you, but so do women. If, if you had a man, be honest, you had a man and you went to your man and said, Oh, I've got this problem. It's I can't fix this. It's broken. The car tire's broken. And he went, I don't know. You would dry up. Like you'd be like, well, fuck it. What the fucking point are you? That's the truth. You could sit here and go, oh, we'd call a mechanic. No, you wouldn't. You'd look at your man and go, what do you mean you can't fix it? I'll do it myself. Waste, she, man. And this, yeah, and this is what she's saying about your man will get up and go, and you know what's beautiful about masculinity? 
A bunch of times a man will go up and he doesn't have a clue how to fix it himself. Mm -hmm. But he'll go, don't worry, baby, okay. Mm -hmm. And he'll stand up with no money and no clue and he'll go out there and fucking try and find a way because as a man, you need to be useful. It is so difficult to be a man. You have no idea the amount of pressure that we're under from society and from the women we even want to associate with. On a whole, it's difficult. So you have to keep all these things in mind. It's hard. But can I ask you a question? You see what you just said about, yeah, the top G, that if they had money, you can fly planes and fly that. Drop it down to if you were earning, like, say, 50000 a year. Yep. Couldn't you be that same person amongst your peers? 100% you That's could. That's what I'm trying to say. 100% you could. And also, also you have to— uh, Money uh, doesn't make you a top G. Uh, no, no, money is an amplifier. So that's, that's the first thing about money. Money amplifies. Men can make money. Money does not make men. If you're a dork and you get rich, you're a rich dork. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a G and you get rich, you're a top G. Right? So that's the first thing about money. And mm. I agree with you. But traditionally— and this is the baseline. And once again, when I say these things, I'm not looking to be attacked for being misogynist. I'm just commenting on how I view the world and how I see things. Traditionally, a man primarily gives his attention to a female to get sex, and she gives him sex back to get the attention. That's the swap, right? So if I'm a dude and I want sex from a girl, I give her attention. I talk to her. I hang out with her. I spend time with her. Eventually, I get the sex. That's how it works. But the higher value you are as a man, the more valuable your attention is, the more valuable your time is the less you have to give. It's like potency, right? So I can give five minutes to a chick, and that's worth two weeks of some other dude's time. But that's the reality. So where you are on the scale is just basically how much of your time you have to give. Now, you can still give all your time to a woman, treat her like a queen, be respected by your peers. She can be happy with you. I'm not saying she will be any. In fact, I'll argue she'll be happier with that man than she'll be with a fucking guy like me. I'm not even out here saying I'll make chicks happy. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying that She'll get the amount of time that she's going to want from that man. The amount of attention is linked to his status. But at a true high-level status of man, it's two DMs. Boom, boom. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. This kind, Ten of, seconds. This kind, of, this kind of leads into my next question. All right, guys. Let's take a second to hear from our channel sponsor. Florida cops are searching for two young women who stole a $25,000 Rolex after a male companion fell asleep during a late-night rendezvous at his condo. According to the Broward County Sheriff's Office, the man picked up the women from outside a bar down the street and drove to his place for cocktails. Though the man later fell asleep, his conniving companions remained on high alert. When the man woke up, the pair were missing, along with his Rolex, watch, and his credit card. Situations like this are happening all over the world, and you have to be on high alert to protect yourself. One way to protect yourself from identity theft is with Virtual Shield One. It monitors banking, retirement, and investment investment institutions for potential data breaches, dark web scans, social security protection with 24-7 alerts, and can protect you and your family with up to a $1 million insurance policy. Virtual Shield One also includes free access to Virtual Shield's industry-leading VPN with unlimited VPN access and advanced VPN Plus features to keep your internet and cell phone browsing activity anonymous and private. This service also includes malware and ad blocking. With a 30-day free trial and 67% off this holiday season, what do you have to lose? I use it myself and love how it makes me feel safe by protecting my identity and keeping my browsing history anonymous. Just click the link below or simply visit virtualshield.com slash pearly. That's www.virtualshield.com slash pearly. And protect your identity today. Remember, supporting my sponsor helps support the channel. Thank you guys again. Do women prefer to be monogamous with a low-value man or share a high-value man? Well, look at look at society, and you tell me. Monogamous. Ask me. Wait. So, so let's ask. Let's ask the the single ladies. What would you prefer? I would prefer someone who's monogamous. I left a situation where I got the Bentley, I had all that, I had the kids, I had that. That was great. I want a companion. I want real love. And to me. What monogamy means to me is someone who's committed to themselves. Mm -hmm. That's like the answer is within you. And to be honest, I feel like, again, like the sex has been lost in translation and what it means. I don't care man or female. It's been lost. as It's so sacred. So for me, I have kind of taken those blinders off where I'm like, OK, he has to be here. I'm OK with dating the trainer in Austin, Texas. That's just where I'm at. Like, I don't need a certain thing because I know what I'm wanting. Mm -hmm. Most guys in that percentage are not going to give me. So I would rather have a monogamous man than someone who what can a, do whatever. Oh, wait, so, oh, no, wait, so you think the personal trainer is going to be monogamous? 
they're like known for cheating no well i mean i'm not, i don't here's here's yeah. my thing like i get it like yeah. I, I don't generalize people because i'm one of the one of the most misunderstood people online as well mm -hmm. and i feel like there's a lot more to me and i don't like to just put everyone in a box i'd so, like to get to know people so no i'm not gonna just say oh well, he, he, of course he's gonna cheat on me like no okay okay would you would you take a guy that makes thirty five thousand dollars a year and had a dad bod Binoculars. had a dad bod yeah dad bod. i feel like for me i would want someone who <laughs> sorry go ahead, go ahead go okay sorry. um i pour into myself mm -hmm. and i'm accountable for my shit i'm aware of what i got going on i'm not gonna have a a mom bod i'm mm -hmm. in the gym I'm, i had a baby a year and a half ago mm -hmm. i'm in the gym four to five times a week mm -hmm. so i would want someone who can match at least the the work ethic now when it comes to money I know for me, I want to be able to, I do not want to rely on a man. I have, I have literally done that before. It didn't pan out in my favor. Okay. Cause what happens is you get the rug ripped from under you and then now you fucking get out, bitch, give me the motherfucking keys. It, it is, it isn't that. Mm -hmm. So for me, the lifestyle I want, I am responsible for. Mm -hmm. So I don't look for a man to make X amount of dollars mm -hmm. because anything that I want, I'm going to get myself. Well, cause in my head, I feel like a guy's just as likely to cheat if he's in the top 20% of like looks just as likely as okay money. you know what i'm saying like it just doesn't right. let, me, let, let me ask let me ask a quick question just so i can clarify something because i understand your points you're saying you want a partner a life partner are you sure and i'm not accusing i'm genuinely asking are you sure you're not confusing the amount of time the man spends with you with his monogamy because they're different things because what happens a lot of the time if a man's out here chasing chicks he's barely home Mm -hmm. But imagine you had a man who was home seven nights a week. He was always home. I'm talking about like an hour. Like dur during his work lunch, you don't even notice. <laughs> then would you even give a shit about monogamy if you had all of his time effectively? Would you really care? I still would care because I, I feel like it's still just an hour a day. And we're not, it's not really quality time. I feel I really have been in so many different situations. Again, the trainer in Austin to the NBA player, baby daddy. Like I, I have seen all of that stuff. And this is just my personal experience and perspective to where I want someone that sees the value in the Grand Canyon. I want somebody who. I understand. Okay. Like, so, so that's a good point. And that's, so I'll just ask the first question. I'm going to ask the second okay. question. The realization you've come to is an interesting one. It is something that happens, especially to, to females as they mature. Don't you think it's strange or why do you think that zero women on earth choose those kind of men who they perhaps have slightly lower status but are, are more likely to be uh, loyal to them and be monogamous, et cetera? In the modern world, because like I said, the world's changed, why do you think zero women choose them when they're at the peak of their choices? So when a woman is 19 and she can go anywhere she wants, every man wants her, she can go on any yacht in Miami, she can get flown out to Dubai, when she has all the choices in the world, why is she completely uninterested in those kind of men? And then when she gets to a certain age of maturity and all there's a whole new generation of girls who have all the choices, then they sit there and go, you know what? I deserve monogamy and da da, and they all of a sudden want to grow up and mature. Why don't does why does no woman decide that when she actually is at her most valuable? I I feel like for like I said, I don't like to speak for all women. I just speak for myself. But I know for me that I was looking for a man for a lifestyle, something that I was not able to do individually by myself. So that's why it's like, well, yeah, I want to be able to do this, do that. I want to go for the football player that was just on GQ. And in reality, now I realize, well, okay, there's a lot that comes with that. I can make my own money. I don't necessarily need that type. Type of guy for the happiness that I'm looking for. Again, seeing out you in the Grand Canyon is a lot different than like, okay, here's money for this, here's allowance for that. And well, here's an hour of my time. As you I... asking why a man that is 20, 21, 23 is not a top G, like a 30, 40 year old well, man. No, uh, the point... your, your age actually dictates your sort of maturity to a large extent. Well, I'm, argu I'm arguing the point. The point I'm trying to make is that what I actually think happens, especially uh, in the modern world, because the modern world's all fucked up and nothing's the way it's supposed to be. The traditional life path of, of a female is she's 17, she's 18, she's 19, and her value is massively inflated. And I don't blame her. Of course it's massively inflated. Imagine being 19 years old, have achieved exactly fucking zero in your life, <laughs> knowing nothing. You put makeup on and, and sports stars, billionaires, actors, the most important famous people on the planet, the richest men on the planet are begging for your attention. The ego you're going to develop Let's all be honest, right? The ego you develop is going to be monu fucking mental. I'm special. I'm so gorgeous. All this bullshit, right? And then what happens as they grow older, as new generations come along? Because the truth is, most women are are, are at their peak attraction. Let's say in their early twenties. As they grow older, what they what women become is far more fearful of competition. This is why you'll see a woman who's a bit older go, oh, you know, I really want monogamy. What she's scared of is her dude getting a 21-year-old. That's what she's fucking scared of. She may not know it. She may not say it. But basically, that's what the truth is because she knows a 21-year-old is going to be more desirable, higher status, more fertile, 
That's what she's scared of. Cheating so when is woman, bad when you're 30 or so, 20, sir. So no, but I'm not, it's not about that. I'm telling you the, the, the shift in the female mentality. Because when a female is 20, she doesn't give a fuck about any of this. She doesn't want to find the nice man. Now she's trying to, like you're saying, chasing a lifestyle, chasing Mr. Promiscuous, chasing Mr. Famous. Doesn't give a shit until she starts getting scared. Oh, shit. Oh, my, my age begins with three now. And then they change. Their mentality changes. It's a fear element. That's can the reality. I, and I it's a biological that? fear element. I'll give you an example of it. You know what's amazing about humans? We are still very primal. If when, when men like these two and me, when we walk through the mall, people just move. It's like you can <laughs> sense when you can sense when the big animals turn up, right? It's something amazing about humans. If you have a very attractive 45-year-old woman, she's gorgeous, but a gorgeous 19-year-old walks in, look at that 45-year-old woman's face. She's furious. <laughs> she fucking hates her. She just doesn't like her for no reason. Yeah. Because women understand, un, un, unfortunately, unfortunately, but you're innately, your age is a massive indicator in your value. In an inverse way to men, men are more valuable as we get older. Every man, every woman knows that. Every woman will sit here and go, yeah, I want a man who's older than me. Of course. But if, if I say it the other way around, I'm misogynistic. It's just the reality of the world. So, so then we have to go into the other point. The point is this. When you were at your peak value, you had zero interest in monogamy. But then you find a man who's 35 at his peak value. He's finally struggled and worked because when he was 19, no girl spoke to him. When he was 23, he was broke. When he was 24, he had no life experience. When he was 25, he couldn't fuck. When he was 20, whatever. He finally gets to the point where he's now at his peak value. He at 35 is you when you were 19. And then you're sitting there saying to him, no, you should be monogamous. Da, da. It's like, well, you fucking weren't. You did whatever you wanted in your peak. Now I'm finally got there. And I had to work for my shit. God gave you you. God and L'Oreal gave you you. I had to fucking struggle. I had to go through hell to get on this yacht. You got on the yacht with an Instagram DM. I had to buy it. And now you're telling me I need to fucking settle down and, and behave and grow up? Fuck well, you. Because it's bullshit. You're assuming that the journey is a man that starts with nothing to something because there's a lot of men that, that is have exactly the... the journey of every man on earth. Do we you... are born without well, value. Do you, th ah, do you think... So there's, there's specificity in that. Can I just because that's not how it should be you, for everybody. You... And that's not how it is for everybody. And not for every woman either as well, may I just say. Can I ask Brittany something, please? Um, you know, like, oh, then you, you've learned in the past... Mm -hmm. And now you want to find someone to settle down. With hindsight now, would you have reversed it and like started young looking for someone to settle down with, looking for those values that now you know? I'm talking that with hindsight. Okay, well, I've I actually from 18 to 22, I was in a relationship. I've always actually been a lover girl, despite what I put out online for you know. I've never views. seen you online. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. fine. Well, that's even better. Um, I have always wanted one person and I feel like I was so delusional in thinking that, oh, I'm, I'm like you said, like I have value. I'm beautiful. I'm this, I'm at my peak. Like, why wouldn't you want to be with me? So a lot, going into these relationships or just like, P, I'm sorry, just people. Mm -hmm. My goal was always to get commitment. Like I'm giving you my time. I'm pouring into you because I want commitment. And the reality is I'd never had, I'd never really understood my value. So I was going through guys, giving up sex, doing this, and it, it didn't make sense. So I believe in like I stand on everything I do. Like yeah. I, I I don't I don't do apology tours. It is yeah. what it is, and I think that's where I feel like when it when they talk about women being delusional and all these other things, it is true because what you have to understand yeah. is that there are repercussions to your decisions, which is fine. Uh -huh. So then you're talking about okay, well I want this type of guy, I want this, that, and that. You're talking about maybe monogamy. That's three to five percent of animals are monogamous. I think that's what it is, uh -huh. right? So. The, your window is really, really small for what you're looking for. And even to go on to the point where you said where you were talking about, it's like a subconscious fear. I think it's like, for me, I feel like if, if it was more of a fear, I would have just stayed in my situation. Like, it, it wouldn't have made sense. Like, I mean, that was my first kid. I, I thought I waited and did it, right? Hmm. I left because I believe that there's something else on my heart when it comes to love, and I'm just going to have to trust that. And if that means being alone, having a dog, I have to take that chance because the Bentley, the ring, the house, and still getting, again, deceived, right? Mm. Disrespected because deceit is disrespect, right? <laughs> so I just, I cannot settle for that. I can't suck a dick and shut up. And that is where a lot of people don't like my views and what I represent mm. because it is something new. I don't know how it's going to fucking end. I, I, so I don't what, know what's going to so happen. So what would you tell your 17, if you had to like, what would you tell your 17 year old self knowing what you know now? Looking back and you had to meet yourself at 17, what would do you tell your, your what would you tell yourself? Like, lock it down and wait for the right man. Don't have sex. What would you tell your 17-year-old self? Mm. That the answers aren't outside of you because I feel like I'd always look for men to 
answer all of my questions that I've ever had. I thought when I had a man, it would complete me, complete me. And I feel like too, um, especially with like my dad not being in my life, you look for somebody to guide me. Like, so that's where for me, I put too much value in someone else having the answers for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm really big on accountability. So I, I would just tell myself like, to be patient, to take your time. Cause I was always quick. Oh, let's try to get in a relationship. Like we weren't even compatible. There's a lot of just not compatible factors. So I feel like for me, it would be to slow down and to really get to know people instead of just blindly banking on potential that most likely will never be tapped into or selling myself short because there's a fear of, well, I don't know, this could be the best that I could get. I might as well just shut up, shut up and suck a dick. And, and that's what, that's what I meant about, about women nowadays, because Exactly what you'd be telling your 17-year-old self is what happened back in the day. So when I'm repeating mm -hmm. these things, I'm going, to, oh, you're old-fashioned. But it seems like women do what they like, and then they hit a certain age and say, oh, well, I've got to settle. But it's not settling. You're just getting whatever you can you know, or whatever oh, you deserve. You know what, Because auntie. if you think back now, you'd be telling people now, rather than say that auntie's old-fashioned or auntie don't know what she's talking about, look what she'd be telling her 17-year-old self, which ain't nothing that I already said. Yeah, because that's really and truly, you know what, yeah. really and truly, let me finish. Let me finish. Because what I've always said, and you can check, I'm an older version of you. So where you've been, I've already been on a comeback. So that's mm -hmm. why I asked you, what would you tell your 17 year old self? Because me telling you is, I'm telling my 30 year old self. Mm -hmm. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So okay. it's not that I'm old fashioned, it's just that women hit a certain age and then realize, oh my God, it wasn't that old fashioned. You know, it works mm. because it does. Mm -hmm. But there's no point in waiting till you're a certain age to start thinking about it. You know, even if you're like, you hold your own accountability. So it's like if you meet somebody and they were like 17, 18, and you saw them acting a certain way, they ask you for advice. You won't say do as I do. You say, listen, like, this is what happened to me. And this is what I thought. And what I recommend you do is blah, blah, blah. Am I, I right or am I wrong? If no, they ask you for your advice. No, I totally get what you're saying. Like, mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that. I, I think that no matter what you decide to do, you have to accept whatever repercussions come behind mm -hmm. that. So any advice that I give to anybody is do what you want, but just know there are repercussions, good, bad, or indifferent, that mm -hmm. are going to come behind it. So, I mean, and I think that's just where I'm at. I don't even think it's like an age thing. I think it's like, in reality, I have a, I have a son, and you really start asking yourself questions. And again, I, I hate that it took having a child to really look into my life and call myself out on my bullshit. So but, if, you, if but, you got pregnant earlier, if you got pregnant at 18, 19, would it? I was always on birth control. Okay. I was on birth control for a decade. I got off birth control because the person I was with wanted to have a baby. Okay. So, so um, again, I thought I did it right. Clearly not because I wasn't married, but um, it still didn't work out because it just wasn't my guy. Mm -hmm. So that's where I just think like even if I still would have taken it slow, there just were a lot of people that just were genuinely not my person. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm. Uh, I would just speaking like, of speaking yeah, of marriage, um, I wanted to know: Do you think we're in a post-marriage society? Mm. Because on one hand, um, we hear that women should wait till they're married to have sex, but at the same time, we also hear from the men that they don't want to get married anymore. So, what do we do with that? Seems like it's true because <laughs> nowadays a lot of people are looking at marriage as a contract rather than a partnership, and there's a huge difference between that because with a contract. There are so many terms and many headaches and this and that. And no well, it is, a, it is a contract. Well, yeah. well women are that's paid to why. Leave, yeah. But that's because it, that is what it is now. Because realistically, the traditional sense of marriage is not a contract, really, in terms of the law. Once the law is involved, that's when everything went tits up, I think. <clears throat> yeah. So the, the problem is, is that there's zero advantage to marriage in the Western world for a man. There is zero statistical advantage. If you use your mind, if you use your head instead of your heart, and you look at the advantages to getting married, there are absolutely not really none. Because this new idea of new age feminism just basically destroys all men in the idea, or in the event of her leaving. And, and it's very common that women leave, right? Let's, let's stop the man versus woman attack, et cetera, et cetera. Life's difficult for everybody. We all have different challenges, different things to go through. But if a woman marries a man and it goes wrong, she has emotional heartbreak. Fine. But if it, a man marries a woman and it goes wrong, he has emotional heartbreak. Plus, everything he has ever worked for is ripped out from underneath him. And he has to give that chick money forever. In some places, so, you don't even have to be married. Exactly. That's why the men don't want to live with the women either. That's right. So when you make these rules and these laws, right, under the guise of feminism and equality, all this garbage, all you're doing is scaring men away from commitment. And then you have to add in the other hidden element, and the other hidden element is what I said earlier, is whose fault a lot of this is, is promiscuous women, right? Mm -hmm. So when society is broken down, if women were saying, if all women got together and said, we'll only have sex after marriage, guess what men would do? 
get married. Mm -hmm. But you don't, right? So now you're in Miami. I go to Miami. I can fuck anything in the club. I don't have to marry any of them. If I marry them, I get wrecked. <laughs> so, like, let's all use our brains here. What mm -hmm. am I going to do? Well, I'm mm -hmm. going to be like, well, no. Bounce. See ya. No, no. So men have been scared away from the idea of marriage. And that's a lot of that is the fault of this new bullshit law and this new feminism and this new crap. They don't give men any tactical advantage. And I'm talking about small things. A man's not even allowed to be a man in his own house. Do you know in England you will get accused of emotional abuse? I can marry a woman, not lay a hand on her. I can just raise my voice to her. That's emotional abuse. I can raise my voice to her because she's going out drinking with dudes. She can go out drinking six nights a week with men. And I can say, what the fuck, you're my wife. Sit down. She can call the cops, call me emotionally abusive. I get arrested now. Now there's a court case against me. I have to go to court and defend myself. She'll divorce me, take my house. I have to sell my car because she's drinking vodka with fucking God knows who. But you notice that what, earlier it's on. It's insanity. What do you, what do you, you, what do you, think, of, what do you think of child support? <laughs> And that's another interesting thing because a lot of these arguments, it's it's it it goes beyond man and woman, and it goes into the the larger sphere as a whole, right? Because we talked earlier about war and how a lot of men used to die, and that doesn't happen anymore. So what you used to have in societies, and I'm not saying I have all the answers, I'm just commenting, right? Mm -hmm. What you used to have in societies is a bunch of men would die at war because men have more dangerous lives than women. There'd be a bunch more women than men. The top G's would impregnate a bunch of women, and the top G's could take care of the women, and that'd be et cetera, et cetera. That's now changed, right? So the reason, a lot of the reason that monogamy is pushed is because it's good for society, and it is good for society. It's good for society as a whole to have a man, a woman, a family, they're together, the man provides for the woman, et cetera. The government doesn't want to pay for all these kids. If you don't have child support, who's paying for these kids? The government does it. It, it breaks down, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why child support is enforced in many parts of the world. In certain other parts of the world, child support isn't enforced because they have religious beliefs or genuine, fam genuine family beliefs that keep the families together. But in the Western world, now you need child support because you've broken things down to the point where men don't want to be married to chicks. Mm -hmm. Chicks don't want to listen to the man. The man can't even be the man in his own household. He can't even feel respected where he goes. His woman gives her, him no status. And, and now he doesn't want to fucking deal with her anymore. So how do you get that kid paid for? Mm -hmm. Well, then the, tell the man or you go to jail and you just come along with a fucking long arm of the law and you fuck him. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's difficult. It it's hard sense, to answer. Though. Yeah, but it's, it's hard to answer. The true answer to all of it is an idealistic answer. I don't like to think idealistically and talk idealistically, but it's the truth. The true answer to it is to instill in the man a sense of duty in which he wants to take care of his woman regardless because that's his child. But yeah. you will do that. I'll tell you how you do that. You do that by inspiring out of the man by being a very good woman. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If I had a child with a woman and she was always a great woman to me, she was never, she never cheated on me. She was a good woman to me. And I was running around being whatever. And she's like, look, I just can't put up with you anymore. You're top G. You're going to do what you're going to do. I'm going to look after your kid. I'm going to, you can see him anytime you want. I, I care about you. Please don't leave me in poverty. I'd say cool, hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not a fucking dickhead. Can I cool. say, I that's, a, that's I a real you. man you know, though, because I was in a, a situation just are. yeah, but I was just in a situation like that to where it's like hearts don't break even, and that's the reality too. It's like if those morals and principles are not instilled in a man, none of that that's shit matters. Right. So obviously the, the child support stuff obviously hits close home to me because. I'm already 50000 It's just, just in lawyer fees trying to get him to provide. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it sucks because it's like you play in the NBA. Like, why couldn't you? Why don't you want to do more? And it's just yeah. because, again, of the relationship. It's personal. It's not about it's our personal. Son. That's right. So it's yeah. like, yeah, if you're not. So, so I just I just feel like it's like, why do you get money for making a poor choice? Well, it wasn't and, a poor choice I, because I, it, was, okay, it took I'm two. Not, I'm not trying to, like, disrespect you in any way. It's just like. If you left, uh, and no. so it's yeah. like, why do you I, get money I, for it? It just right make because sense. we because we made a commitment. That's so we it. made a, at the end of the day, we mm. made a commitment. We have a forever commitment. Fuck marriage. We're mm. we are forever family. Mm -hmm. right. So again, as someone who is literally going through this, if I made more money than him, I would be paying him child support, mm. and I, that would be fair to me. But this is That's what's really interesting. What's truly interesting is if you go to other countries. And I'm talking about civilized countries, right? If you go to Poland or Czech Republic or whatever these countries, which are in many metrics more civilized than the West, they're safer to live in, they're cleaner, et cetera. There's no child support laws. So if you have a divorce, the man just takes care of the woman because that's his kid and that's just what he's supposed to do and that's mm -hmm. just it. So what you're saying is, he, you're right about the man having the morality instilled inside of them. And my point is that 
a, the reason a lot of this doesn't exist, the reason men don't have morality installed in them is not just about the individual case of the man. It's about society as a whole. Mm. It's about women as a whole, men as a whole, the dating game as a whole, the life he's living as a whole. And and it's, and this is the world we live in. This is why I was talking about how dangerous new think is because now we have this new think, this new world, and we're living in this new world. And the truth is, as a man, now you're, the game has changed. In the game of chess, Sometimes it's not about winning. It's about making sure you don't lose. If you cannot lose, if you cannot blunder any pieces and protect your king long enough, you'll win the game. And there's a lot of men who are now like, okay, how do I not lose? Well, you know what? I become fucking ruthless. That's how I don't lose. I get, I get all my sex because the women are promiscuous. I get laid as much as I want. I don't let anyone fucking tie me into anything dumb. Any bitch wants to get fresh to me or fucking talk to another dude, I cut her off financially. But man, you just get ruthless so you don't lose the game. But that's because the game's been rigged against men. So the harder you rig the game against us, the more ruthless we're going to have to be to compete. And that's it's unfortunate. I'm not saying well, I have the answers. I'm just, just saying why men do what they I do. Can I just say with regards to Brittany, I just think that with regards to child support, you've got a kid, you look after it. Hey, I and think, I do. I but, and no, that, not you, the men. I, oh, I was no, like, I do you. look no, after no, my no, son. No, not you. Okay, I was like, I, I, no, on. that's what I said. No, that's what I said with regards okay. to the child support. That's what I first yeah. said. I think that you have a kid that you should look after it. I, I don't agree that, I don't agree with men giving the women money, but I think it's disgusting that a man can have a child and not support him. So, I, so do I, but this is another thing. So this is, this is the comments we have to make, right? Because we don't have all the answers, but we have to make the comments on it. This goes into the deeper point. Every time a court rules in favor of a chick having $100,000 a month, that puts men off to a level. Like, it's fine if there was a, a baseline child support. $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month. That's If you have a kid, baseline, regardless of income. If your man wants to give you more, he does. If he yeah. doesn't, whatever, whatever. But when you come along and start saying this percent of a man's income, do you have any idea how scary that is to a man who works for his money? Mm. He works for his money. And do you know why it's scary? It's not just because he's giving his money away. It's because he knows he isn't giving money to the kid. Yeah. The kid, you can raise a kid on 500 bucks a month in most of the world. Mm -hmm. You want that kid in Gucci, you in Gucci, you in a nice car going on dates with another dude with my money. You can, I'd rather burn the fucking house down than give, to give it to you under they those five circumstances. They should make vouchers, no, I just, no, I oh, vouchers for child support. Think, I just think it incentivizes poor decisions. Like I, I haven't gotten pregnant by someone, but like you, someone. But I'm saying, but like you're gonna you're gonna pay someone who's done that. Like why do they get? Okay, no, but I'm literally I'm literally telling you that mm -hmm. what if I made more money than him, I would have no problem paying for my child. Oh, and there's child child, su child support laws mm -hmm. vary in different states. So in North mm -hmm. Carolina, for instance, if you make over combined of three hundred thousand a year, mm -hmm. then you are considered off the grid so then you have to prove this is how much my your rent is any bill that my son occupies mm -hmm. i get a percent that like, i get a percentage of so the, on the low end it would be 50 percent. if there's a big enough salary gap it could be up to 97 percent mm -hmm. and the court the judge gets to decide what makes the most sense so if, if my child's father makes 20 million dollars a year from basketball he gets to decide if six thousand dollars is a lot mm -hmm. if eight thousand or ten thousand whatever mm -hmm. but you have to prove that so it's not like you just it's, it's enough money for a chanel bag mm -hmm. like these are a my son watches Peppa Pig, that's a part of, that's a cable bill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a percentage of everything. So you're not like just living, living it up. You're just living. I mean, so you're, so you're able to, the, there's a my, roof over your my, son's my, head. My whole point is that like, it's all down to choices. And, like, and the man were, made a choice too, because I can't I, get I, pregnant I, unless I, he nuts at I, me. I, I, I understand that, that, but I'm, I'm then saying, there's nothing to argue. You're, you're, the, you're, the, that. you're the one that's only, you're in, tro in control of who gets born. Abortion's legal. Uh, okay, as well, as, if, soon as, uh, as soon as as soon as he nuts, girl, it's completely out listen, of his control. Listen, can girl. I just say something though? Wait, just Auntie, playing devil's advocate that I had a I, I had my child and we and the dad went together, and I didn't take a penny from him, and the government wanted me to, but I decided that no, that he was better off that my child I look after him myself. Anything he wants to give his son if he wanted to is extra, but I worked hard and I done it all on my own because so it was just less that? because it's less headache. Uh, is this no, and I know a child. lot of women that went that it's route. It's my child. Unfair, though, that it's you, you have to think that he's not going to be a man and take care of his child. Don't you think that's unfair on you? No, because he's my child and he's happy. Now I'm give him what he wants. Child as well. He made that child. That's yeah. why I don't it's, need a but man but the, but the attitude. The whole point you know? is you choose who you sleep with. Listen, right? As like, far yeah, as you he chooses as well. That's I, the thing. Yeah, like, this is this is too to tango. What are we talking about? I'm saying, I'm saying right now it's not fair because women have abortion. That's legal. It's not legal for them. Oh, they, they, get, they get no say. Fair. They get no say in. And the same thing with birth. I mean, I could have done. I could have done, but it wasn't worth my time. You can get. Why am I going to go and fight a man? IUD. It's like 99. But what if the man wanted the child though? That's exactly my point. What, so I was on birth. Let's let's just look at an my, example. My whole point, my point, I, I think he should. I think he should take care of it. But I just don't agree with having legal incentives for women to leave. That's my point. He should give you money for the kid. 
If you have a kid, you should, but I just don't agree with... with, with See, but the thing is, if men stood up and became fathers to their children, women wouldn't have to... But if women... 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 But it starts... We're in control. We're in control of who we sleep with. So at the end but of the day, but that's not the but point. We, because if you pick, if you pick, pick but child. if you, but you pick who you sleep with. Okay. So if you pick a guy but that's getting girls she, pregnant left and yeah, right. But she doesn't know that wait. he's not going to be there. She doesn't know that. If she, she trusted, married him, she'd be alright. She trusted this man to be a father to mm. a child, and now she's left with a child, and no one's going to support her. Marry Don't him. you think that's unfair? Should have married him first. I mean, you, you can get married. Of course, you get married. You get married. That's what I'm saying. It's just like marriage is what solves problems. Are you guys actually sitting here? No, what I'm trying to say, marriage will solve a financial problem. You've spoken out. See, please don't to cut me off. This is the problem, yeah? Stop acting like every woman that leaves a marriage and gets divorced is because she's this and she's that. There's a lot of women that suffer and they actually need the support and the legal incentive so that they know yeah. when they leave, somebody can back them up because they'll be on their own. Stop acting like men are angels because there's a lot of men that are sometimes. dealing with a lot of the traumas that they have from a Trauma. man's world being difficult. The same way that Andrew Tate explained, a man's world is highly competitive. Men are out there suffering. It is hard to be a man and a lot of the time, the person takes the brunt of it is the woman so yes she's well within her right to leave take her child and be in a better place and the government should step in to make sure that that man that made her make that decision yeah. steps in for their kid Can I say because something? The time, wait the time that she takes to take care of the child is the time that she doesn't have to go to work so she's already done on income and she's having to be taking care of the child on her own that don't make sense not every man is a bloody angel and not every woman well, is a no, devil hang on pick men wait hang on a, hang on a minute hang on a minute leave. Go ahead. hang on a minute how, when, do, how when do you do that when did I say a man was an angel how do you do that how do you do that I'm talking. Right I'm talking. No, I, I, I waited. I waited. Yes, you did. I waited. You right? Did. So now it's my time to talk. Talk to me. What I was saying to her is, right, is that if she had got married first, then she would have been all right. She would have to be fighting for the court. So the same law that you're saying would have supported her and her child. And no, and that is the difference between getting her. married Mm-mm. first. No, the, and the that's what difference. I'm saying. And that's what Mm-mm. women getting are saying about... Getting married just gives you more money. Than, it's not a divorce money. and Listen, kids. Okay. You it's just not inter- a good decision, yeah? Excuse me, but I shut up when you were talking. Go on, apologies, my auntie. Right. right. <laughs> they meant to disrespect you. So what I was trying to say is that there is an incentive when women get married first and have children. Because I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that you, I'm just saying women in general. If a woman gets married first before she has a child and then it leaves, then it's totally different. Like he said before, she's set up for life. If she but leaves, auntie, she's like out for life. Said. So if somebody she's set else... She's out for life without marriage, though. That's the point. Yeah. No, and, 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 that, and that is... Like, what you want to hear. No, and as a person, again, let's ask somebody who's actually going through it, because none of you fucking know what the fuck you're talking about when it comes to child support, l- lawyers, none of that shit. None of you fucking know, okay? Mm-hmm. So you don't. The reality is, if I would have gotten married and did everything right and did everything the moral way, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Guess what? All I would have addition, on top of what I'm going through with child support is alimony. So I'm still in the courts fighting, whether I'm married or whether I'm not. So that I get what you're saying because hey, you at least get the commitment to you know maybe back up that he's gonna be there. Okay. But it doesn't ensure anything. Everybody wants a fucking guaranteed thing. No, There's no minute, guaranteed in life. We're, we're talking different places. When you're in America and you're married and you divorce, you still got to fight for your money. And would you still? Have yes. To, not you in have England. to get a lawyer. Right, not in England. In England, you get uh, a lawyer and it's sorted. That's the difference. But you but you don't have to be going there saying, oh, I need this for my child and I need this. You get Once you get divorced and you go to court, no, it's that much. Lawyer. Alimony and child support are different. Lawyer, I'm saying auntie. she just spent 50,000 pounds. She's still fighting. You don't have to no, pay that here. You would not have to pay that here. You would not have to pay that here. You would not have to pay that here. Do your research. You would not have to pay that here. When you get divorced, she wouldn't be going for all the battle that she's going. It'd be simpler in England to get divorced than in America. That's what I'm saying, in oh, England, don't take your money, don't get married, have a parental partnership, but, love but your auntie, woman, pay whatever I, you need I just want to make kids. a point. Uh, you know what you were saying, get married? Even Tate said it himself. Men don't want to get married anymore. Why are you so not turning what he's saying? Why are you not twisting what he's saying? You're not even listening to what he's saying. It's not attractive isn't it anymore. Isn't it's it more true at a loss for a man. You're not taking what he's saying and you're twisting it to suit yourself. What did you say? I'm not. He literally said, Tate, didn't you say that men are scared of getting married now? Yeah, okay, but why? Because, like you said, with child support, they feel like there's no advantage. That's so that alimony, you say just alimony. get married. It's not that simple because men don't want to marry you. Okay, so let's 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 analyze that point. And first, and first thing, back to the child support thing. What's actually interesting to talk about is there's a lot of countries in the world where there is no child support system, and it functions right. So you have to, if you want to pay attention to actually, you know, learn about society as a whole, it's very interesting to study all the 
different societies and economies in which there is no child support and, and children don't die. I mean, people get divorced and they still find a way to function. And it's interesting. And it's a very long conversation because it extrapolates about how the whole society works as a whole. That's the first point. Second thing, I'll actually sit here and argue the point that I don't think any man really ever wants to get married. I think that women convince him to get married. And I think that any woman who is genuinely serious about convincing her man to get married could do it. I don't think in the modern world, at least, men wake up and go, can't wait to get married. But what they do is they get a chick who's so good and ticks so many boxes and makes them so happy. And she'll sit there and say, you know what? It would mean the world to me. Please. <laughs> and he'll go, oh, for fuck's sake. All right. then." <laughs> and that's what happens. So I still think you can convince 99.9% .9 of men to marry you. The point I was making is the society, society isn't convincing the man to, to, to marry you. It's not like it used to be where the man believed he had to be married. Society's done the opposite. So it's your job as a woman to make it clear to him that it is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Once again, how would you convince a man it's worthwhile for him to say, that's my wife? Status. That's how you do it. This is the under, a misunderstood hack to, to men as a whole is status. If you can say, if you can convince that man, but by marrying you, his status will increase amongst his peers. He's going to do it. And for anyone out here who disagrees with me, the things men do for status, let's actually analyze how baseline men are. What is status? Status is respect, right? Men kill over respect. Mm. Men, gangs kill each other over respect. A man will smash another man's face in for insulting him. We will die for respect and status. You tell me we won't get married? We'll die for her. <laughs> we'll go to the front line of a war. And the only reason we don't walk away and abandon our post as artillery shells rain is because we're afraid of being mocked for being a coward. We'll die for status. So status is what it's all about. It's what it's always been about. If you want a man to marry you, status. And it's the same thing with nearly anything you want to do with a man. I don't know anything about your personal life. I'll be honest. I don't know, right? But I'll tell you this now. If this dude, this NBA player, believed that he would be higher respected amongst his peers and amongst society for taking care of you properly, that's what he'd fucking do. He doesn't feel that because either he's rolling with the wrong people or you've pissed him off in a way or something public's happened. I don't have a clue, but something's happened where he feels like if I take care of her, I'll look like a bitch. That's what he's scared of. If it was inversed, he had no problem giving you money because that's how men function. I'm telling you right now, as a man, I'm telling you what I would do. If I had a chick with a woman, right? And she went on the news, top cheese this and fucking, I, and this, I, like I said, I have no idea what you've done, but I'm just giving my personal made up scenario. Oh, yeah. she, she would go on the news, top cheese this, and he fucking lied to me. He's a piece of shit. Da, da, da. And then I bought her a Bentley. Well, was like, well, look, she insults top cheese. She insults him and he's fucking, he's a simp. Da, da, da. But if she was like, you know what? He, he's misunderstood. He's a good guy. It just didn't work out. Boom, boom, boom. I'd make, she'd be in a mansion. Right. And would that be me being a nice guy caring about her? Or let's be honest. Would it be me being a selfish piece of shit dude and saying, what makes me look better? Mm. Men are all about status. It's how we function. It's how we function as a whole. So society, this is where it extrapolates. It gets interesting. When society with this new think has destroyed all of the baseline humanities and baseline understandings of how men interact with women. And now all the things we previously understood about what made a good man, what made a good woman and how we should act together and how we should interact has been er erased of course men are acting like dickheads, and of course women are doing wrong things, because nothing makes sense anymore. You've taken the chessboard and moved all the fucking pieces around. Nobody gets it. It should be very simple. I'm a man. I work hard. I take care of my woman. I'm the man of the house. She treats me with respect. She would never insult me or raise her voice to me in front of other people. She's a problem. She brings it to me in, in private. We act as a team. We work together. If we break up, she was a good woman to me. She fulfilled her roles the best she possibly could. I'm still a man. I'm going to take care of her. But all of that is gone. All of it's gone. All of it. And it's gone because of all the ideas we were discussing earlier. The feminism, the new age bullshit, the fucking dudes left and right and center. All these things... All these baseline things have eroded society to the point where now you have men ignoring their paternal instinct. You have men who will sit there and go, that's my child, but I, I fuck her. That, that is, that, that's actually a massive observation to make about how fucked up society is. And, it's all, and it's, it shouldn't be that way because men in a lot of the world are not like that. And, and so you have to look at all these small things, the small things we talk about. It's no big deal. She goes on boats in Miami. It's no big deal. It is a big deal because now that dude ain't going to want to fucking pay child support because you were on those fucking boats with his fucking the other team. And the thing That's is, is that game. Do, you, do you think, do you think that well, men? That was well said, Sagittarius. 
Thank do you, you very much. Do you think that <laughs> men marry for like high status families? Like I'm thinking of like Ivanka Trump. Like would someone marry a girl for like status in that way? Well, that is one of the most. I mean, if you look at arranged marriages, it's off of status, right? That's uh -huh. an example. But men, men primarily marry for. I, I, I'd argue that men, and I say this about men, but women do the same thing, right? Women love the idea of getting status from a man. Mm -hmm. Women love the idea, and this is where it actually gets a bit messy. The waters get muddy because. Women love the idea of bragging about the man they're with, mm -hmm. but they can only brag about the man they're with if other women want that man. So you're saying you love women who get cheated, women love getting cheated on. That's not true. But women do not like men that other women don't want. Mm -hmm. If you were to say, look, I got my man, he's perfect, he's rich, he did da 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 and every girl in the room would go, I would never touch him. She'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want him either then. What the fuck but is But you that? know, can I, so I don't talk so, about that? So, but, but it's true, right? No. Women, want, women want men that, that all the women want. Do you know what's the best man that a woman wants? Is the one that every girl wants, but he doesn't want them. Okay. A selective man. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's more but valuable that's the than problem. the top. But that's the fantasy. You're saying that's that the men. Fantasy. I just but take. No, that's you're not saying the that fantasy. men are There's now polygamous and women should accept that. That's the problem. Men are continuously disrespecting their woman. Like, yeah, you know what? You're with one, you can't be with one woman. Now you want to keep cheating with all these different but that's, women. That's not what he said. No, he, no, no. He's saying no, if no, you're no, gonna no. go, if you're gonna go for a high status guy, if you're gonna go for the top five percent of guys, that's what comes with it. And if yeah, not, they that, go for the average guy. Can I just say though that before? So is it okay for average guys to stick with one woman then? It's not about okay. It's okay for anyone to do whatever they want. I'm not sitting here saying what's okay and what isn't okay. What I am talking about is observations about the baseline realities of how humans function. Mm. What I'm telling is if you give a man unlimited options, like the men at the top of society have, on a long enough time scale, he will explore said options. That is a fact. Like I said earlier, you can walk into a car garage and buy a Nissan, and that's reliable, and it'll never let you down. Or you mm. can buy a McLaren. You cannot sit like women do and go, I want the McLaren that's reliable like the Nissan. Well, guess fucking what? <laughs> that's not real. So you have to choose. Can I ask you something, Mr. Tate? Can I ask you something? I want to Years go ago, next. right, do you, do you think it makes a difference? Because years ago, if you want to meet a man, you go out there and you actually talk. But now you meet a guy, he can go and check out your ID and see what you're all about. Can't, don't you think that by them being able to look and see what you're all about, that makes a difference to how they perceive you? A hundred percent. I think society is fundamentally and utterly broken. I think the way that men and women interact is broken. Mm -hmm. I think that men are broken. I think that women are broken. I think everything is completely fucked, genuinely. And, and this is where we go into the small things. We're talking about status. You've, you're right about IG. If I go on a date with a girl and I look at her Instagram page, I'm sitting there thinking, does this make me look good or bad? Yes, I want her to be hot. Yes, I want her to have followers. Yes, I want everyone chasing her. But what's that caption about, about fucking city life? And what's mm -hmm. this about? What's that? That's not, that's not, nah, that puts me off, right? So it's interesting. What's also interesting is the majority of women don't have a clue in the modern world what men find attractive. So we said earlier in the very beginning of this podcast about men who want their dick sucked and all this bullshit. Men don't, that's not attractive to men. We don't want any of that. They, most women, if you were to say, how do you attract a man? They wouldn't have a Scooby-Doo. They a wouldn't smile. have an idea. They I know. Idea. They want a submissive woman. Hello. My she name kicks for him. Give him some massage. Not, no, but feed him great. It's not just, no, it's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> Pat his hair. It's, it's not just, it's not just about that. The, uh, the, one of the, one of the important things for being a man, especially in a relationship is we want to be our woman. If, we, if I have a woman and I love her, I want to be her portal to the world. I want her to experience things through me and see things through me. So for that, I need a degree of innocence and purity for her. I want to be the first person to put her on a private jet. I want her to get on the jet and go, wow, I did it. Oh, you took me. It's like giving, you wouldn't want to give someone a Christmas present if they'd had 10 presents better than you beforehand. Yeah, Would it's you? Like, it's right. like, well, duh. Yeah. So as a man, so as a woman, what makes you attractive to a man to a degree is your innocence and your purity. This is That's very important. Purity. And it can go down to very basic, simple things. I'll tell you, if I walk in a club, do you know who the hottest girl in the club? It's the girl who isn't dancing, isn't twerking on a fucking dance stage, not surrounded by dudes. Girls want, when girls want male attention in a club, they start drinking, twerking. That is the most revolting, haram <laughs> bullshit. I may want to fuck you, but I don't want to be with you. If you show me a girl sitting in the corner, shy. I'm like, good, she hasn't experienced too much life. I can show her things. Mm -hmm. And also, not just show her things. This is a very important point that I get attacked by the Matrix for because they completely misunderstand me on purpose. As a man, if I'm out here struggling and leading and trying to lead my household, I also want a woman who shares my values. I want to a degree to educate my woman and show her things and for her to agree with me. Like you said earlier, you're looking for a male role model. You want to be a role model to your woman. If she's too experienced with life, it's difficult to be a role model. If she's sitting there shy and quiet, you can come along and say, no, you know what? 
Don't take the fucking vaccine. Listen to me. And, and you can be a role model for her. You can't do that for a woman who knows too fucking much, knows too many dudes, been too many places. So it's what this about, degree of purity that we're looking for that's I, super important. I'm, what about curi- I'm, cur- I'm curious. If you said if she's like done too many things, that's like bad. Right? Yes, correct. So, not, and I'm not even talking sexually, like been on a private jet. Yeah. I'm curious because I live to. But certain... how do you get on a private jet without sucking dick? Oh, I was just curious because my, my dad's part of like he's top like one percent in terms of like income. And I was just curious, is it different if you did stuff with your dad? Well, no, that's fine. <laughs> what? I mean, no, no, not like that. Not like sexual. That that's a, not, oh, no, I'm not like. Well, you said private jet. Yeah, yeah, private jet. Well, I mean, I know I know exactly what no, you're saying. Yeah. But no, but my point is that we're looking for a, a, a true degree of innocence inside of females, and it's that innocence that's going to make us feel protective over them, and that the protectiveness is going to make us be good men. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so when we're looking at society as a whole and how broken it is, I understand that men have a massive role to play, women have a massive role to play, but. A lot of the paternal instincts and instinctual behaviors of men, because the instinctual behavior of man is to die for his woman. Mm-hmm. Like someone comes to try and take her, pull a sword, die to defend her, right? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're going through life and you find that men don't really feel about you that way, that's because a lot of their instinct is being eroded by the fact that you, like you said, they look through your IG or they look through your life and you've lived so much life mm-hmm. and they just feel like, I, there's nothing new I can bring to this girl's reality. But I, I, I don't new. feel I, like I, that's true, though, because, like, I think it's like I, I get what you're saying to a degree. Right. But it's like you could be on a private jet 10 times, but it's going to be special because it's with you. Yeah. Not for him. It isn't not for him. For him, it's special because it's your first time because men, maybe it's a biological predisposition. Maybe it's just the way we're designed. But let's let's tie it back to sex. Virginity. First time. It's not that you've done it. It's that you've done it with the first time with me. That's what is important. It's experience as a whole that men find. It's just the truth. Call me misogynistic, cancel me, whatever. I'm telling the truth I always have done. It's experience of life as a whole that men, to a degree, find off-putting. We don't want a woman who's had a bunch of trauma, had a bunch of experiences, done a bunch of shit, knows a bunch of people, been a bunch of places. That's the absolute opposite of what we want. We want the complete polar opposite of that. And what's funny is women want men who have, who have done those things. I'll tell you right now. Go out there and find a virgin woman and say, do you want to have your first boyfriend? Do you want to lose your virginity to a virgin man or a, a man or, or, or a man who, who's had a couple girls? She'll choose a dude with experience as a virgin herself. Mm-hmm. Experience is, is always coveted uh, and yeah. respected in men. It's the opposite in women. That's true. So, that's true, so it, it's true. So we have to look at how fucked up the world is. Women, especially in their, between their 18 and 28 or 18 and 25, let's say, are living these crazy lifestyles, these crazy lives with the most important people, richest people on the planet doing everything that can be experienced under the sun. And then at 29, 30, some dude's expected to come along, know he's second place to X, Y, Z and be happy with that. And 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 not not allow it to hurt his ego, mm-hmm. and and sit there and and pick it up and put a fucking brave face on. It kills him every day inside. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. He's in he, love with you, and you've been fucking where with fucking who? I can't afford a jet. I'm Joe Schmo. Okay. That fucking breaks their hearts. Do you do you think that hoes can ever be turned into housewives? Dep- okay, I'll answer that question. And the answer is actually, truthfully, yes. Which I know a lot of people are confused by. They can. If you're a good enough, high enough level man, you absolutely can turn a hoe into a housewife. But why the fuck would you? Because you don't have to. Mm-hmm. A man like me, I could. But I don't, I don't have I'm – not, I'm not low on options, so I would never decide to do that. Mm-hmm. If you're a billionaire, could you – you know, you can find an old rusty car and rebuild it or you can just buy a new one, right? So mm-hmm. it's, not that, it's not about what could be done. It's about what will be done. Mm-hmm. So once women hit a certain status of man, I don't think women are stupid. I actually argue the fact that women have a beautiful intuition. I think that women, to a degree, their intuition is truly almost psychic. The number of girls, number of times I've come home and she's like, you were cheating. And I was like, how the fuck does she know how to fucking cheat? Like, you have it's intuition true. and it's real. You guys, are, you guys are smart, right? And if they get to a certain echelon of man, they're not going to go anywhere because there's nowhere else to go. They're going to get to a guy eventually. They're going to stop at the buck and go, you know what? Where am I going to surpass this specimen? So I'm just going to behave why? for him. So you could turn a hoe into a housewife that way. But why would a man at that level want to do that? Why, why do some um, guys at certain, and this is obviously a celebrity <laughs> example, but I'm sure we can all think of examples in like day-to-day life where a guy with a lot of options does pick a hoe and like wife her, like for example, Kim and Kanye. Because Kanye clearly has options. She right? did that's, not want to be a housewife. No, she I'm, was I'm, a project. Okay, I understand. I'm just asking. Because some guys do pick. Yeah, they do. And it's a really good point. And I have nothing bad to say about Kanye. In fact, I think a lot of the work he's doing now in terms of attacking the matrix is, is important, but I yeah. can give you a generalized answer. 
But it's a man who is not true to his masculine imperative, which is going to fall for the propaganda machine, which is being purported upon him, who's going to believe that all the crap that is being told by society, like a female's past doesn't matter and mm -hmm. all this shit doesn't matter. This is what's interesting in the fight against the Matrix, because people always say to me, Andrew, why do you come here and say all these things? They're literally trying to destroy your life for what you say. And the truth is, as a man, you have two choices. You either fight against the programming and the brainwashing they're trying to put inside of all of our minds, or you end up fighting against yourself. If you're a man and you sit down and you believe the garbage that society is telling you about the, how society functions between men and women, you're going to end up getting fucking wrecked like these dudes do. Mm -hmm. They sit there and go, just because she's fucked everyone doesn't mean she'll do it again. Just because – and they sit there like dummies and they get fucking wrecked, right? You have to sit there as a man and go, no, I don't give a shit what society is telling me. I understand something baseline about humanity, right? And that's why they make these poor choices and a lot of men do make these poor choices, but it's only in the West. It's only in the West where this propaganda machine exists. You will not find a Russian billionaire doing this dumb shit. You will not find a Chinese billionaire doing this dumb shit. You do not go to Saudi and find a sheikh doing this dumb shit. None of it. You okay. only find it in the West. Do you do you think okay. the values of the West are spreading? What like, what values? So, so name just, a value. Okay. Of the West. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Name sorry. a value. Sorry, I'm, I might have misspoke. Ideals. I mean, like the ideas of the West. Like I've heard, I've just gotten like I get messages from people like from all over, and like in places like India, I've heard feminism is spreading there. Like I've heard that. Do you not find that to be true? So, firstly, the West has no value. The only thing the West seems to defend fervently is LGBT. I'm not saying anything about it. About it. I'm not. I'm just saying it's the only thing that they'll stand up and fight for. I don't know yeah. why. It's weird. Like, this, they don't care about anything else. They don't care about children going without child support. They don't care about people dying in wars. Mm. They don't care about our old our parents being in parent homes. They don't care about crime. They don't care about no one being able to pay their energy bills. They don't care about nothing, but they give a shit some for some reason about this one thing and they'll fucking throw the flag Which all around the world. Which is surrounded around sex. That's, that's all they care about. It's fucking strange. So that's the first thing about the values of the West. Second thing, the harder society and the harder the life is as a whole, the, the longer it's going to take for feminism to spread. Feminism only exists in a vacuum of an easy life. If you're living in a society like India where life is hard, feminism disappears because the harder life is, the closer people naturally revert to their gender roles. If you got a bunch of 10 men, 10 women stranded them on a desert island and they had to survive, very quickly the men would do men shit and the women would do women shit. There'd be very little talk about feminism and equality mm -hmm. and all this shit would fucking vanish when shit hits the fan, right? Mm -hmm. So... In countries where life is harder, feminism can't take hold because feminism can only exist in a vacuum of a very privileged life. I'm sure there's some kid in India who didn't get laid off some chick and he's complaining she's a feminist. There's a bunch of dumb shit, right? But, but I think the world is going to get a lot harder. I think the world is cyclical. I think it's been easy for a while. I think hard times are coming. And when hard times come, people are going to naturally revert to what gives them the highest chance of survival, which is gender roles, right? I have the best chance of survival being a man and a woman has the best chance of survival being my woman. That's how she's going to function. Do you, do you think women typically are happier um, as housewives rather than a career? Well, depends the on the career. No, the depends answer is, on the man. The answer is absolutely not really yes, because giving life is the most beautiful thing a female can do. That's what you evolve to do. That's the thing that men cannot do. I think that women who focus on having children and do their best to be good mothers in the end are the happiest females on the planet. Being a mother and being a housewife is kind of different, though. Okay, no, but it's it's essentially the same thing. If you're a housewife long enough, I'm going to assume you're going to end up having children. And I think that the sooner a woman has children, the better. If she can find a good man and have a child, that's a fantastic thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I don't see the point in a woman slaving away for a corporation that doesn't care about her as opposed to slaving away for her own flesh and blood. I think that's a complete waste of a life. I think if men are already doing that, why would you want to go along and do that because as well? Because a career why? is not just slaving away for a corporation. A career can involve a million different things. Well, that, that's exactly what a career is. It's slaving well, away for a corporation that doesn't care about you. And I understand you have to pay the bills, and I understand you don't want to be completely sufficient. You want, want to be self-sufficient. You don't want to be dependent on a man. I understand all that. But in an idealistic scenario, in the vacuum of ideology, if you could sit and have and be a woman and focus on having children or focus on doing a job, I think on a long enough time scale, you're going to be much happier with your progeny so as opposed to working a job. Can I ask you a question because I feel like we talk a lot about hoes, we talk about a lot of the extreme. There's a lot of great matter in the middle sure. where a lot of women kind of get lost. Yep. For example, I think that one of the issues sometimes that I hear a lot about and I personally may say I feel it sometimes is that when you're also a quite educated woman, intellectual, intelligent, whatever, smart, a lot of the time naturally you speak in a way that stands out from other people, yep. right? And I find that a lot of the time that kind of intimidates some of the men them where they start thinking this girl is a bit too much. 
Now, it is not my fault that I'm smart. It's not my fault that I can put one and one together very nicely and very quickly. What kind of man is Sorry. going to handle that? I have to give me a minute. This woman laughs like I don't speak for long because I've got three degrees. Now I thought. Wait, her. is she trying to say you're not smart? It's okay. I speak for I do for a reason. So please, That's sir, can you help me out? That. I'm trying to find a husband, the kind of beast that can handle a woman like me. Well, <laughs> well, this, well, this is another point, right? And and I, I'm only answering generally, right? Because this, this is the first time I've met all of you, ladies. You've all been very polite to me. You've all been very nice. I'm just talking generally. And I'm going to answer it based on your last sentence. Your last sentence was handle a woman like me. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at the average man's life, like I just discussed earlier, how difficult it is, how competitive he has to be, and how many problems he has to fix. Do you think he wants to handle any woman? Okay, so... Do you, like, the idea of any degree of problem. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Like, the, the, point, of, the point of having a woman as a man, for me at least, is for her to be my peace and quiet. I have... My life is stress. You see me, I'm rolling around with fucking security teams and I got problems and they're after me. And da -da. I, I'm, when I come home to my chick, the last thing I want to do is have to handle anything. I want her to just sit the fuck down and her make me happy. Mm. She used to be my positive energy. She used to be my sunshine in the rainstorm. Okay. So uh, you're talking about him handle you. I don't know. I can't answer the question exactly. But if you're sitting there constantly arguing over small points or correcting him or that he's probably thinking this is a bow i don't have the energy to for another fight okay yeah, so yeah. now let me add extra context to what i mean as well so obviously submission is something that people talk about a lot yeah. for me i'm a logical person i believe and i submit with logic i don't submit by default because okay. there's a level of respect that i believe i need to have yes to be able to submit obviously it's I not agree. that i go around and i disrespect all men and everything but i find that my level of Thought process, a lot of the times, mm. it makes it hard. No, so I don't, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, thank you. You know, but you need to find a man you truly respect to submit to him. Yeah. And I completely respect that. And that's the same with, that's the same with 99% of women. Like you, you're never going to submit to a man you don't respect. Mm. And, and respect is ultimately important because you're not going to sleep with a man you don't respect. You're not going to be attracted to a man you don't respect. Respect is the bottom line of it. And the man has a job to do. He has a duty to do to be worthy of respect. But this all goes back into a very interesting point. Some of the points I've kind of mentioned earlier. If I was a woman, if I was a chick, the chance of me ending up in a relationship with a man I don't respect is 0%. I don't understand how you girls end up. Well, I do understand how you girls end up here. You end up here because of feminism, promiscuity, promises that running around taking dick is fine, dumb shit, stupid decisions. I'm independent, so it doesn't matter that he's a dummy. Bunch of garbage. When you should be waking up going, you know what? I'm going to be extremely selective, and I'm going to take my time and be very, very smart mm -hmm. because you're the gatekeeper. By the time you're in a relationship with somebody, you should have immense respect for that man. Absolute immense respect. You shouldn't be able to get there any other way. The only reason you got there is because you've been tricked by society and lied to and told a bunch of fucking bullshit. So, yeah. you, so you're talking about submission and respect. Yeah. It'll come when you meet the right man, naturally. And this is another point I make because I have a lot of men message me. I Trust, guys, mm. please understand the most Googled man on the planet. I have 100,000 emails a day Damn. from people. For, and I get dudes email me, how do I get my woman to submit? And I don't reply to I can't reply to all the emails. But I, I, if I ever read them, I'm like, bro, you're a fucking dork. Why would she <laughs> reply to you? Why would she submit to you? You're a fucking nerd. That's the truth. I'm not out here saying submit to all men. Men are the boss. I'm saying, listen. There is natural balance in the universe. When you meet a G, I've never had a trouble. I've never had trouble with a woman obeying me. She just wants to. It's natural for our dynamic. Mm -hmm. If she didn't want to obey me, we wouldn't even get to the point of a relationship. If she didn't feel like she wanted to listen to me, we would have never got to where we want to get. It just doesn't work. That shit only happens when the female's fucking giving up sex too easy and the dude's just picking up easy pussy and they end up in some bullshit relationship they don't even like each other. Mm -hmm. That's dumb shit. That's dumb shit, right? But I don't have any of these problems in my life. And if you're a dude at home and you're watching this and you go, I want my woman to submit and she doesn't, guess what? She doesn't respect you. And guess whose fault that is a lot of the time? Your fault. That ah. is your fault as a man. Tell yes. Us. It is. Yes. No, no, it is. Yes. No, no. I'm That's not, what no, you guys need to damn hear. Tell him, please. But it's not, it's not about blaming men and women because everyone has a problem. But but then there's also men who are worthy of respect who women refuse to respect True. because of society. Tell the so, sisters, So there's two, there's two sides to it, right? Mm. But a lot of it is if you're a capable enough man and you're brilliant enough, then the female has no choice. But it's very interesting. 
this goes back into a point I made earlier about how important it is for us men to find women who we don't believe have had a lot of life experience and look like they are. Because I got attacked. I'm going to make this point right now. I got attacked when the Matrix attacked me and fucking lied about me. Mm. They said that men are interested in women who are younger because they're more programmable and that they're trying to make out that I'm making out that men are out here trying to get women and fucking do bad things to them. No. What I'm saying is if you find a woman who's younger and been through less things, less trauma, less relationships, less headache, she's lived less life, your ideals, if you ask any woman who loves her man, what's your favorite song? His favorite song. Who do you vote for? Who he votes for? What's your favorite car? His car. That, that's how what happens when a woman loves a man. And that makes the man feel good, right? If she's been through too much shit, then that's a lot harder to pull off. Mm. So that, 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 that link is very important for men and women. But, um, so, yeah, the Matrix attacked me with that. But it's very, very interesting. You have to understand all these small sub-dynamics and why things are happening and why the world is the way it is. And the baseline of it is, is that Everything's fucked. Men aren't acting like men, and women are acting like women, and it's all messed up. Oh, yeah. Wait, so what about, Is like, it... your own autonomy and, like, just, like, you can – your favorite car is your favorite car. My favorite car is my favorite car. Yeah. Like, why does it have to okay, – I, so I guess that's where I'm confused. Is it like, why does, Yeah, why does it have to be like that? I'll, 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 yeah, and that's a good point, right? I understand that completely, but I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll talk from personal experience because it okay. makes it easy for me. I have a bunch of cars. I love cars. I have 32 cars. My favorite car is X. I pick up a chick. This is my, uh, what's your favorite car? This one. I like that one. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. No big deal. But the agreeableness is ultra attractive. The, it depends what the woman wants to do, right? If, if I was a woman and let's say, let's say, I'm an, let's say I'm 22 years old and I meet a billionaire and it's my goal to marry this man and I go to his house <laughs> and I say, wow, you have so many cars. What's your favorite car? This one. Really? I thought that one too. It looks so good. Why that one? Because this, this, this. Oh, really? Okay, I'll try and remember that. That's how you get the dude, right? You don't get the dude by going, well, that one is a better color. You're a dickhead. It's, it's, it may be small things. It may be tiny things. But men are ultra interested in things like agreeableness. So We're ultra interested in the idea of a woman absorbing our worldviews. We're ultra interested. We are. That's what we're looking what for. What if you That's say, taken away wait, from the woman's what, identity, wait, though. What if you say, she doesn't like the car. No, no, no. So wait. why should she agree she, to a car she that she doesn't she like? Doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't, why do you want to be with she, someone she doesn't that doesn't know who they are? She doesn't have to agree. Can I say, oh, I'm I like this one. Wants. This is my favorite, but I like yours, too. Yours is quite nice, you know. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's quite good. But I like this one, but I like that one as well. You sound like you want a slave. Is that fine? that doesn't have their own mind. That's just not going against me. It's just being nice. It doesn't cost you much. It's like, you can say, oh, baby. Men, men don't want a girl that's nagging on them for the smallest things. It's like, why are you giving a guy a headache? No, 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 that's not nagging. That's not nagging. That's not nagging, though. He's saying, he's saying, he's saying, oh, what car do you like? Uh -huh. Why does she have I'm to say talking, his car? Guys, like, she guys, likes a different car. I just car. gave you a solution, I'm talking, though. I'm talking about, I am talking about how as a female to be as attractive as possible to men. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a man if you say another car. I'm saying, how do you be as tra attractive as possible? Because be you nice also about it. because you also don't understand how men think. It's different if you come to my house and choose to like another one of my cars. But what if I only have one car? And now you say, well, no, I, I pick you up in my BMW. Oh yeah, it's nice. I prefer Mercedes. You know what a man thinks the second you say that? Oh, sure. Who picked you up in a Merc? <laughs> That's the first thing that goes to his fucking mind. Who? How do you know about Mercedes? What Who if you, you, can, what if you can buy your own Mercedes? That's, that's exactly. not what, that's what, not what crosses that? the man's <sighs> mind. I'm telling you how men think. But then that's why. Wait, and that's why. Denava, what, yes, percent, sorry, what percent of women can really afford their Bro, own Mercedes? Bro, yeah, especially when you go crazy. Right. No, no guys, 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 I said a Mercedes. I said, okay, I said what percent of women? I drive a BMW. I said, okay, okay, I'm really, I'm really happy for you. I'm really happy for you. I said, what percent? The average woman makes thirty. Five thousand dollars a year. It's not that hard in these two kids. It's not that hard. Okay, I said. Okay, okay, we're still talking about the point. Okay, that's still venturing from the point. I'm really happy for you. I'm really happy for your car. <laughs> but no, the no, no, average but woman, the I'm saying what, per, but the whole point is that what percent of women even earn that much? It's not a high percentage. So when a guy hears that but you, you have, wait, that wait, much. wait. When a guy hears that you've been in this car and that car and that car, his automatic assumption is that you're an average girl. And that foolishness. And that, and that you've been with a bunch of guys to get to that point. I, I've had a lot of experiences because of my dad, because my dad's very successful. But I've been in situations where I've said, like, oh, I did this, I did this, I did this, and they think it's with a guy, but it's with my dad. Because most guys assume that you were an average person. And, and that's and that's just you don't think that's demeaning a can woman I, can I just to say that she can't afford a lot. It's not, it's not, it's not demeaning a woman. It's it's looking at a balance of probabilities. I, if I if I meet an average guy, I assume he makes average Sounds money. Like a I, 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 I think it's just been it's based many on what, can I, uh, wait, out of wait, stop and wait. It's based on a balance of probabilities. Can I just say something that it's all about making a man feel 
Like he, everybody says, oh, he's a top G. But it's like, if your man put up a light fitting and you're standing and watching him put up the light fitting, or are you, Denalva, you're they're watching a man put up a light fitting, what would you say while he's putting it up on? How would you react? I'd be like, you're probably doing it wrong, but I'll let you finish and then <laughs> you go back and fix it. Right, That's all right the then, but hang on a minute. And how would you act if your man was putting up a light fitting? I'd be like, well, no? good, thank you, baby. Okay. Well, oh, I would be like, th- see, the thing is, I No, just answer the question. I'll just no, answer no, the question. Please, what would you say if your context. man was putting up the light fitting? I'm just asking the I question. I would be like, What's thank you, light? babe. Thanks for putting oh, up the light oh, fitting. I right. appreciate you. My man put up a light fitting. I was like, wow. He got it all out. It was all in boxes. He got his toolbox. He was up there on the ladder. Whatever you want me to hand you. I was like, oh, my God, you're stripping wires. Oh, my God. Then he said, oh, turn it. When it finished, I was like, it works. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. I agree. That is what he's talking I about. Agree. When he's talking about the car, he's not yeah. saying you can get your own car. He's saying make the man feel like he's doing something, make him feel appreciated. That's right. Like act like a child. Yeah. No, I like, agree. Ma- I you agree. know, and that's what he's saying. He's not saying that, oh yeah, you don't like that car. It's like, my man got a car. It's like, oh my god, it's got heated seats. Oh, that's I the like same way seats. a girl likes oh, to hear. You're I, the most beautiful I got, I got girl Mercedes. in the world. Exactly. I think it's got to be a balance, though. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I like to make my man Listen, feel right. good. I, when my man dresses up, I'm like, girl, you look so fine. Like, I like to make my man feel good. But he has to do that to me as well. Listen, right. He has to offer me that sexual I listen to Mr. Tate, right, say about... Oh, let me put, for instance, there's an artist that I like. My man likes it, too. COVID had just sort of, like, finished. I got two free tickets to go to the to go. My man said to me, you're not going. What would you do? I'm going. <laughs> what would you do? Uh, why? You can't tell what, why, why, why am I not going? It doesn't matter. He said uh, to you, you're not going. Because that's just the logical submission. I know. Okay, why that tell me why I can't go? Okay, no, but the whole, like, the whole point is you pick someone that you respect enough to trust his judgment even, when you, even when you disagree. That's I, the whole point. I want to, I want to find See, somebody I don't agree like, with. Like, respect because enough to not bring me stupid Just because you're in a relationship. Guys, 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 stop, stop. Wait, 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 wait. We need one at a time. Why would you think it's something stupid? or whatever, you trust the man enough to be with him. You trust the man enough to sleep with him. So why won't you trust his okay. opinion? Why does he have to give that? If I say to my man, like I right. went in, if I say to my man, don't do this, the first thing is we're thinking, not she's telling me what to do. There must be a reason behind it because, why she's telling me not to do. Because, because she trusts me. I did not go. I had two free tickets. I did why, not go. Mama. I'll tell but you why. Wait, wait, wait. Until you ask me a question, I'll tell you why. Because the same way a man wants that sort of validation, a woman wants assurance. Exactly. I don't want to just blindly do everything all the time, especially sometimes I'm thinking, okay, that's a uh, Okay, so let's talk. Let's that's make, what submission no, is. No, so let's, make, let's yeah, make a point. Auntie made submission. a really important point. Auntie made a really important point. Because the point she's making is twofold, and it's extremely important. Because a lot of women talk about being submissive, but there's Submissive when it suits them. That's not submission. So she wanted to go to the concert. He said no. She trusts him as a man. She didn't go. Absolute respect for that. That's exactly what my woman would have done. Exactly the same thing. Women go, I'm submissive. You're submissive when he's buying you shit in bed and you're submissive. But the second he says something you don't like, you instantly turn off the submission run your fucking mouth. That's not submissive. That's manipulation. That's bullshit. So that's the first thing. The (laughs) second thing is responsibility and authority are linked. And if I'm, as a man, if I'm going to be responsible for a woman, I need a degree of authority over her. This is the reality of it. If I'm going to be responsible for paying your bills and responsible for your personal safety and responsible for your personal development and responsible for fixing the life fitting and responsible for everything that I'm supposed to do as a man, I need a degree of authority to sometimes come along and say X, Y, Z and be obeyed. If I'm going to have a ship, if you have a ship, the reason the captain has to go down with the ship is because he is responsible for everything that happens on that ship. And because of that, he has authority. If he yells at the shipmates and they all ignore him, then he can't be considered responsible for the problems on the ship, which means he doesn't have to die with it. If you want a man invested in a relationship, he needs to be responsible for you, but he needs authority over you. And you know what? The smartest thing you can do as a woman is sit and go, you know what? Go into this concert. It's two hours. But this is going to piss him off, and it's going to be a splinter in his mind for years. But can I is just, this can I... really worth it? Now, I'm not saying let some man abuse you, let some man treat you shit, da-da. but if you have a good man who's good to you 99% of the time and he comes along and he really cares about something, you should give him that grace and give him that you know what, he's the man, he said it, boom. Done. Because mm-hmm. if something happened to you at that concert, if your, bag, you so. if your bag was snatched, if you got fucking robbed, if someone tried to punch you, if someone grabbed you, who would you call? Okay. Help, the help, police. Help the me. police. You call your uh, man. The 
Senora Pali. You Andrew, call him. Senor Andrew, Mr. Tate King, Master Supreme Leader of everything, the universe, Girl. the matrix, and all of that. No, I just say this because no, it keeps him chilled. Wait, yeah, wait, I've got to make my wait, point the right way, you know? But Tate, do you not think that wait, sister, it's not respect Wait, to wait. You? Guys, Listen. wait one second, one second. I just say, you go ahead. You, you want to say something? Just doing the most. Of course I have to do the most. This is the thing. <laughs> what you don't understand is that as a lady, I am displaying to you that it's very easy to speak to a man like Andrew Tate as long as you don't need to step on his toes and you expect you respect the authority that he has. I'm not going to sit here and try and fight against a man that has done a lot more in my life, been in rooms that I haven't been in because he's Andrew Tate. I respect you, but I can still put but. my point across, okay? <laughs> my point is... No, but there is a point, of but, course. Look, can I just say something? Is, when you, know, you say but after something, you just can't say no, everything you however, said before. However, however, it's a point, it's an acknowledgement, and then comes the counter-argument because I don't have to agree with things to speak, okay? So my point simply is, fine, I get that. But at the end of the day, the same way that we have evolved now, as a woman I have evolved, I, I would expect, and what I do want is not equality, is a certain level of respect, which means that if I am also somebody that is quite smart, somebody that can take care of themselves, I've I've done all of this for about 30 years of my life. You can't tell me just no. But you, what the condition is, sorry, yeah? The condition is, instead of telling me no, give me the assurance as to why you said no. Because actually, I am agreeable when you make me feel assured that what you're doing makes me feel safe. Actually, because what women are looking a lot for it, it, is Denova, stability. Denova, and stability Denova, comes Denova, from Denova, knowing that you can Denova, trust the man. Denova, it I don't trust blindly. It doesn't, Denova, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, Denova, it doesn't count if you're only agreeable when you feel like being agreeable. Can I just say like, something, that's Denova? That's can I just I say said, something? I'm submissive. I'm submitted, you're, you're, you're only submissive logic, when you no. you're only submissive when you feel like being agree like when you feel you know, like it's can I just say something to Nova? Out of respect. We live in different houses. Of course. If I went, he'd never know. My me and my man, because I, I I'm a caregiver. If I if I went, he would have never known. Right. So I still didn't go. Okay. And so what you were saying? So I'll say to you, okay, baby, you don't want me to go. Why don't you want me to go? Like, what's worrying you? What's the matter? Why would you not want me to go? But why would I want to question him when he's always got well, my best interest at heart? Well, I want to know. He's not I don't know why, because my you. best interest... Why should he have to explain everything? Wait, because, because you're not a child. You are and, also an adult. No, and it's not... Um, I'm treating it's not a only woman that, like she doesn't have her own mind. It's it very is, disrespectful. It is an acknowledgement. It's like, acknowledge I'm sorry. Think about it, right? I'm a 26... I'm 26, right? Yeah. I've lived my life all by myself. And then I'm in a relationship, and this man is telling me I can't go I out. Know you with no reason. Girls, let me give you an Does that make sense? Let Can I do that to a man and just say, I don't want you if to go I out? If I told him, if I told my man, listen, right, you know you said you're going such and such, but you know what? I don't really think you should go. He'll think about it, and he'll say, you really don't want me to go? And I'll say, no, he won't go. That's a lie. That's not a lie. <laughs> There's and no man oh, that's, that's just nice. Listen, if we can do, if we can do that, that's a lie. Let me give you, let me give you. Baby, I can veto you, can veto me ask you girls. Let me ask you girls a question. The reason she decided not to go is because this is obviously not a regular occurrence, right? So he had a reason and she trusts his judgment. Let me give you girls a scenario. Let's imagine mm. I'm with a chick, whatever, whatever. She has a concert. I say, I don't want you to go. And she, she replies like you, why can't I go? And I say, got a bad feeling. Don't go. Uh, is, now, now what? Now, now I'll be like. That, now, so would, would, you, would you think the woman should just go, I don't give a shit now, about your stupid feeling and bounce? Or should no, she, what, or should what she trust the reason it might, wait, that bad There's no reason. There's wait, no reason. I've got, got bad feelings. Wait, wait. I've got bad feelings. This is the thing. That doesn't make sense. Wait, wait. wait look at the key. A bad feeling. Listen, listen, my sister. This is the key. When you say, I don't know. I just got a bad feeling. Let me tell you how that is get translated into my head. He cares about me, and he's actually thinking about something that potentially could be happening that I'm not aware of. I love him for thinking outside the box, but you've reassured me. You've shown me respect for being able to no, make my I'm own saying, decision, yeah. and that's all it takes. No, that's but, all a girl wants but, to but, hear. No, but I'm sorry, uh, you, you need a logical reason as no. to why you're going to tell me not a feeling, to go. A feeling is not logical. A feeling, a feeling is not logical. Feeling what is, is the situation? Guys, 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 guys. The, whole, the whole point is like you're not the whole the whole point is a guy doesn't want to explain like every decision he makes. And I don't want to explain to every decision he makes. A lot of times, like men think things through a lot like more than we realize. And so he, he's already thought about it. He's already made his decision. It's a headache to him when every time he makes a decision, he has to explain it to you. That's but right. And if you trust that man, if you trust that man and you've been with him as long as auntie's been with her man and he says something with the kind of relationship they have and the respect they have for each other, of course, she's going to be like, all oh, right, well, cool. Done. That's trust. And that's trust. And I wasn't that's, happy. And, 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 <laughs> of course. But, and also, that's, that's a really good point about submission because submission is largely misunderstood. Like, 
I can tell you a million stories. I've had girls who are like, yeah, you're the man. You're in charge. And yeah, no problem. Da-da. Yeah, she's cool. In, she's cool on the jet. She's cool in Dubai. She's cool in the restaurants. She's cool in the five star. She's cool in the Lambo. Da-da. But the second I say something that she that she half doesn't like, mm-hmm. then she's like, well, you know what? Da-da. Then she's yeah. a feminist, right? So yeah. women do this very well. A lot of women flip flop. Like if, if you trust your man and, and you really want to be with him and you really want to submit to him, there's going to be times you're going to submit in ways you don't like. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. There's going to be you times what, when you have to do things you don't want to do. I've actually said this in the past. Like I, said, I respect you in the fact that you're willing to give a woman a life. You're willing to provide for her. But, so I respect that you can then tell her, I want you to do this, babe. But, but, and she has to listen. Right. But, let me but make... a lot of women, they want autonomy over themselves. But I every, don't, but, personally, I don't want a man that's going to provide for me just so he can tell me to sit no, down no, and I'm a no, dog no, no, and I'm going to no, sit let's, down. Let's understand because something. I, can, I let's, can make my own decisions let's too. Under, let's understand something. Every man will give you a life. It's just a matter of whether you're happy with Not the life that man. Not every man can afford it, you're, though. No, no, exactly. Every man will give you a life. It's just a matter of whether you're happy with the, man, the life that man is capable of giving. And this goes back into the earlier points we were saying. You can find a good man who will work his ass off and give you the best life he can possibly give you, give you every ounce of strength inside of him. He'll give you all he has. You can get that. But if you're going to wake up and go, no, I don't want that life. I want that life. Well, then that comes with problems. Yeah, and, uh, agreed, and, and, and this is the cognitive dissonance agreed. that most females operate under where they sit and go, I want that life, but I want him to act like that guy. Mm. I want the Nissan and the McLaren. You can't have both. What about You a need project? to decide. And, and there becomes a degree of female maturity. As you said earlier, you get to a point where you're like, you know what? Maybe all that glitz and glam and bullshit. Is it worth it's it? It's not worth it. You grow up, right? Yeah. And and that's fantastic. And you make a different decision. And I'm saying that a lot of women get to that point. The problem is, in the modern world, the shit women did before they got to that point, from 19 to 24, pisses the man off to the point where he's never going to be as good as he could be. It's different in your in your world, right? You met mm-hmm. a man, you stayed with that man, ding. I know plenty of people First man, high school sweethearts. Uh, the world was different only 40, 50 years ago. The second man, they've been married forever, 50-year marriages. All that shit's gone. And then we have to tie back into all the other subpoints I've made into you've had a very fun life at your peak sexual value from 19 to 24 running around doing X, Y, Z. Now you're with this guy who can't give you the life he knows you've already lived. Part of him feels inferior. His status is damaged because you, all the shit you did is on Instagram and he ain't the one who gave it to you. And now you're expecting a whole bunch of crap out of him. And now when he comes and works his ass off and manages to save up and buy a BMW and picks you up, hey, I got a BMW, you go, yeah, I like Mercedes. Mm-hmm. And this is the point you're missing. It's but, not about the fucking car. It's about something larger than that. It's about making him feel like he's a man again and that like he's in charge. A you're woman shouldn't have to make a man saying, feel like a man. You're sitting here going, I'm an, all, I'm an autonomous female. I can yeah. fucking like that. But you're, what are you doing? You're damaging the psyche of the man who's trying to love you. Is it worth it for but a fucking what do you car? Mean by so, so, can to we a break point. it down? Take, can Wait, we break okay, it down? I, Does loving mean that you listen to what I have to say and also think about what I want and not just what you want? It's is that, that what loving it, means? It, if that's it, I can I can subscribe to that. But okay. I'm not gonna subscribe to you. Right. Sit down and you have to sit down. It's not what? about that. It's I'm about... a grown ass woman. I pay my own bills, and you're gonna tell me what to do. That's fine. But it gets to a point. <laughs> it gets to a point where you have to sit and analyze the scenario you're in, and try and realize and pick your battles. And I'm telling you, you may not realize it. But a man does a whole bunch of shit for you mm. he, that you don't know. He's watching the shows you want to watch. He's listening to you talk gossip about the girls at uh. work. He's fucking going, yeah, I like that dress, that dress. He doesn't give a fuck about any of it. He's doing it for you. See, that's the but the second thing, it's yeah. back the other yeah. way, nah. you have some fucking issue with he's autonomy. Right. It's he's bullshit. right. Listen, yeah, he's right. Because uh, women, women, women talk I, nonsense I, for a long time. Have, I, I, I listen, listen to like, yeah, babe, you're right. Yeah, babe, can't believe she did that. It's true, babe. Oh, yeah, that show is good yeah babe yeah it's true you so become I'm a my, yeah, I agree it's men true. do a lot but women do of a course. lot too as much as my if my man caters to me I will do anything <laughs> to make him happy if he says oh babe I want to I, I like this meal I will I will make sure I can cook it for him because guess what he actually cares about what I want as well you can't just have a one way relationship one way. I'm just saying you I'm just commenting ways. I'm just saying if I was a woman and I had to make a man as attracted to me as possible my goal would be to give that man status and make him feel good about himself. 
And I'd be very, very careful talking too much about life experiences or opposing views, not because he's out to oppress me, not because he's an evil, horrible person, but because he's trying to find somebody with a similar life view. He's trying to find somebody he can show the world to, trying to find somebody he can feel like he can teach things to. Mm -hmm. That's how you get the best out of a man. I'll tell you how I get the best out of a man. That's why I got Clementine. No, no, no. But if you go into a man's room when he's playing video games and he's playing video games and you say, all you do is play video games and you nag him, he'll play video games. If you walk in there and go, you know what? You're so smart. I've seen you do so many amazing things, and you've said so many amazing things. Why do you waste your time playing video games? You could show me so much. Mm. Now you're going to get him <laughs> off the fucking console. Yeah. But it's an e- I know it's an ego play. I know your old girls are like, why should I have to do that? Da-da. There's a lot of things you Because it tells should... you look pretty but in the morning. It's because you win. It's because in the end, you win. You talk about why should I have to do that? Well, why should you have to work hard at the gym to get six-pack? Because you win. That's the game. Mm. If you, it's actually men are so simple. We are so simple, and the truth is, women know it. This is what's amazing. Mm. Women pretend they're confused. You're not confused. You know. You're just egos are in the way, and society's telling you something else, and you just fucking refuse to be agreeable, nice people. So, no, <laughs> and then it's you wonder, true. And then it's you wonder true. why men have this fucking problem marrying. It, it doesn't so, matter. Wait, 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 like wait, 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 Okay, and it's your birthday, and for your birthday, he gets you, let's say, a five hundred dollar gift. Okay, and you're you're happy, right? It's very, it's thoughtful, it's specific to you. Then you found out last year, he got his ex girlfriend an entire birthday party. How how does that make you feel? He she she he went to he did the most. He he rented out the nicest hotel in London. He got her everything she wanted the year before. Me not care. You don't care I at all. I birthday. don't really care. As long as he's ha- he's making me happy, okay. You don't, you we're don't different. Care. We're different people too. Yeah. It's a different relationship, and maybe exactly. like, you know, he he bought her flowers every day, three hundred sixty five mm-hmm. days a year, mm-hmm. and he didn't do that for me. It's like, mm-hmm. well, if that's what makes her happy, he's gonna do what makes her happy. Exactly. I mean, I get I get the angle. Of what you're saying is mm-hmm. like, oh, he, she did. You know, he did all that for her. Why am I not good enough? But the mm-hmm. second you compare yourself, you lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I I agree. I, but. I'm just saying that's how men look at like your past is like basically like you've given it for free. So okay, so here's my question to that because all right, I love like everything we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to all the viewers out there, including myself, right? You live life. There's gray area. You live and you fucking learn, right? Mm. So where the fuck do we go from here? So do I play the shame game where everybody walks away a fucking loser? Because I can do that. I've beat myself up my entire life for every decision I've ever made. Right. It got me nowhere. So I I value myself. I see the world differently through a series of events. Right. So what the fuck comes next? Because because that's where I'm confused. Right. Because I'm not. It's like I did. If you don't if if it's not like gifted to you, like even in your situation, like your dad provided you a life that like so many people would kill Mm -hmm. for. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's why it's like. It sucks because the reason I hate these conversations is because it's never about, like, empathy. Do I understand the, mm. the, the scales and how someone may view you for this, this, that, and the third? Okay, but moving forward, then what? So, okay, so I, I'm, a, I'm just going to, like I said, make it about myself. I'm 30, single, mom. I, my fucking checkered past is all over Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I have people like you. Who, she's a hoe. She's, a, she's literally known for this. okay. So what would what would be your advice to people like me then? But I don't believe in gray area. I believe black and white. So okay, I'm well just that's unfortunate because you know there's there's yeah. gray. I don't you know believe in gray area. There's gray. I just I there's just gray think, in life. Do you know what to people, answer? Wait, well, I'm gonna answer. Let her answer I mean, I just think there's consequences for your decisions, and I just think like my best advice would be to like lower your standards, like that because mm. because I just think there's gonna be consequences for putting you know promiscuous stuff on the internet. Okay, and, and oh. you probably won't get the type of guy that you could have got at 22. Do you 21. know what, sister? I'll it wasn't meant you. to be then. Do you know what I'll tell you? I would say because I'm 30 and I'm single out of a situation that actually is not because I was a hoe and I was doing whatever, whatever. People can't call me that. I made my decision to be with somebody that hurt me a lot, and I stayed for five years. I came out super late, and do you know what I realized? What my what what I learned is that I know now that I have to be selective and I have to think. If me taking longer to get to that stage is what it takes, then that's what it takes. You accept your future, you accept everything with gratitude because as long as you're breathing, that's the most important thing. At least you've got your child. I am not afraid because I know the quality of woman that I am. I know my value regardless of whether I'm 30, 40, 50. Yeah. 
Do you understand? So it, you don't be afraid by other people's time limits and limitations and all of but, these but things. But because it actually doesn't matter. Denova, and I'll tell you why. Denova, your value goes down as you it, get no, older. No, that's according like, to you. Like, no, but I'm saying to men. And no, you have to understand I'll tell your you buyer. Why. I'll tell you why. Because since Mr. Andrew Tate explained something about status, I understand very well what that actually means. And as a woman, the quality and the value that I hold for myself is actually the kind of value and quality that a man will appreciate the status it will bring to him, whether or not I'm a virgin. Because I've worked on myself to be a woman of quality and substance. I respect myself and I handle myself as such, okay? And that is the way that you're going to actually overcome all of these bad mistakes that you've made because who you are right now actually will make a difference if you stick to it and if you mean it and if you've always been that way. There's always another another story for everybody. It doesn't matter. You'll be a fan. You know, I'm just I, I, somebody that's more emotionally mature. Do you know what I would say to you? What, is, what are you about to say, Andrew? Because you just started speaking. Out. I was going to say... Um, Andrew, she said, said Andrew. Okay, I want to okay. hear... I really... Because... Because you've been through a lot in your life. I like when I, when she told me that you were going to be on and we were going to be on this panel together. I started watching a bunch of your videos, and it really was like there's so much that you have been through, which is why you have a well of wisdom, right? And the difference between me and you is that you're glorified for it, and I am burned at the stake for everything that I've been through. And I, I, it's so funny because people have always said that we were two sides of the same coin as far as like, well, if Andrew Tate gets banned, Bernie Renner should get banned because there's we are all about accountability and fucking truth, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. I'm seen as used goods. You're seen as a high value man. Yeah. So if you're me, then then what? What's yeah, next? Yeah, it's really interesting. And it's, it's interesting you make that observation and you are correct. That's the difference between the masculine and the feminine. It's kind of it's unfair. I guess the world's not fair, but that's the difference between the masculine and the feminine. Men are respected for going through things and surviving, and women are the complete opposite. They're shamed for going through things and surviving. If you look at women, love scars on men for a reason. He's gone through something. He they're lived. war wounds. Yeah, the war. <laughs> men don't want a chick covered in scars. I'll say this right now: that a, a woman, the more trauma she goes through, the more masculine she naturally becomes. And if you were to give me my ideal woman, I would not want of, of wanted her to have a hard life and a bunch of trauma. I like the idea of her having a soft feminine life and being a soft person, and I can take care of her and protect her. Whereas as a man, to be a good man, you need to have been through a bunch of trauma because if you haven't been through trauma as a man, you're a weakling. You have to have been through a bunch of shit. So the masculine and the feminine is a very interesting point there. As for... I don't know. I don't know your history. I don't know the past, but we can just talk in general generalizations in regards. People to like it. me, I guess, okay. under well, the same umbrella. It doesn't okay. have to be personal. I, yeah, I, I don't know yeah. any of it, but we'll give generalizations. One of the main reasons that men are scared of a female with history is is because it makes the man insecure, okay. and and scared dogs bite. So this is why men will snap or get angry quick, or they'll bring up your history. If, if you if you get an argument with him, he'll bring up your history. That whatever. But a lot of it is insecurity, and it's not insecurity because the man is insecure. The woman, the women, the female paradigm in society convinces men, any man who says anything, you're insecure. It's not insecure in that way. It's insecure in a very realistic, logical way. Like I was saying earlier, she's had a lot of life experience. Let's be honest. Am I the richest guy she's ever had? No. Am I the most famous guy she's ever had? No. Am I the best looking guy she's ever had? No. Like, what's keeping her here? And then part of it comes down to, well, am I second place? Could If she could do better, would she do better? Like, there's a whole bunch of insecurity involved. And that's where tiny things, like I'm talking, I know it sounds like dumb shit, tiny things about the favorite car brand become more important than ever, right? It's, it's your job as a woman, regardless of how much se sexual history you've had or what guy you're with, et cetera. It's your job as a woman to make your man feel secure in the fact and make him feel like a man, like Auntie was saying, make him feel like the man, no matter what he does, so that he feels like, you really truly believe he's the best choice for you on the planet. That's your job to do. Now, if you've had a checkered past, that's perhaps more difficult. You need to be more tactful with it, more tactical about it. But you have to achieve the same result. You have to do the exact same thing, right? So, yeah, it's easy for me if I get a 21-year-old a, a virgin from some village in Slovakia and I'm – multi-millionaire Andrew Tate. Of course, it's a very easy... She's never had better. She'll never get better. She's never been anywhere. Boom, boom. Easy one, right? But like you said, the world's not so 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 idealistic. The reality is that people have had relationships, et cetera, et cetera. But a man is happiest in the relationship when he feels like man in the house and when he truly feels like you believe he's the best man that you could possibly ever get and have ever gotten. Because a man is jealous. I'll tell you something. I used to say this to girls as like a joke. And I say, truth and I say, yeah, no, but I say it's a joke. So you cheated on me before I met you. <laughs> and she'd be like, what do you mean? I didn't even know you. It's like, yeah, you fucked that guy before I even knew you. You cheated on me. And they used to laugh, whatever. But that's how men think. 
That's mm-hmm. the male mind. Like, I love you, and you've been fucked by who? But I didn't know you. I don't care if you knew me. You should have waited. What do you mean? You didn't know? But that's the male mind. So he is at competition with all of your exes and all of your lifestyle and all the things you've done permanently. And it's down to you as a woman to sit there and go, how do I make him secure in himself and secure in his masculinity and make him believe that investing in me is still worthwhile because I still truly value him despite the fact that I could do X, Y, Z. I hope that gives some clarity, but that's, yeah. that's the answer. So you know, how do you know that? what I would have said? Oh. I would have said, oh, for anybody in that situation, come off social media and just raise your child. So the next, the person who meets you has got nothing to... But I never knew you. I never knew who you were because I don't, I've never heard of you before. So when I spoke to you, by the way people, by the way you're saying like what's on, what's on the internet, let me just say, you're a nicer person than what you sound like, like what you perceive to be. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, oh, that Pearl's got, oh, there she's a whore, she's a whore, and I've heard, I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about you. And I was saying that if you didn't have nothing on social media about your checkered pass and you met somebody the same way how I met you and I conversed and I got to know you is the same way that they would. Yeah, and, and, and it is interesting. And it's also back to the masculine and feminine, right? Because I'm all over the internet and supposedly I'm misogynist and I'm evil and all this crap, right? But if I meet a, if a girl, even if she disagrees with me, in fact, I'll say this. I've never, ever met a single female who's ever come up to me and disagreed with me. Every woman comes up to me and loves what I says. But let's imagine I met this imaginary girl. She was sitting there. And if I were to have a 10-minute conversation with her, by the time I explained the level to which they tried to destroy me, how they tried to freeze all my bank accounts, raise illegal charges against me, put me in jail for things I didn't do, put a travel ban, take my passport, all this garbage. By the time I explain how hard they tried to hurt me and failed, she'll want me. Because she'll be like... You can't kill this guy. <laughs> and that's going to be it. Uh-huh. Like, you say a bunch of shit I don't like, but you know what? You're, you're the man. So th- it's, it, it is about experience, and it is different. And, and that's a really good point about social media. Social media amplifies all of this shit. It amplifies all these problems. Everything we're discussing, everything we've discussed back to the beginning, from status to promiscuity to your past, it's all social media. Without social media, a lot of it goes away. Yeah. And I think but that's why me and my yeah. man last so long is that we, he doesn't do social media Completely. and, and I, there's nothing on there about me. I feel like to answer your question, too, because I have had people say that as a solution and it's like you can run but you cannot hide from the truth Mm -hmm. and i have shared that why my voice has been so impactful and will continue to be impactful is because i have put myself out there and i have been punished for being honest so it's like i have been giving a platform given a platform and a voice for a reason Mm -hmm. even sitting down in this conversation thinking there's not one person i'm probably going to agree with and probably going to want to leave um I have been called here for a reason. So it's like I can't go against what is in my heart and what I am coded to be. And that's why I feel like it's important for me to sit here and represent people who feel like me. Because it's like I didn't – I don't want to say I didn't – I don't even want to say that. Um, I just feel like I don't see a lot of women under my umbrella who feel the way that I feel. I don't see opinions shared that I – that would be worded the way that I feel nothing. I feel like a lot of my thoughts are very unique and it's, it's kind of scary because I have been through different things. I, I see the world in a different place. And when I even speak online, people think I'm fucking speaking Swahili. Yeah. So I, it's like, I, I, and I know, I know, and I know exactly what you're saying and, and you're making good points. And it's just, I think that regardless of whether like we're talking about different positions, I compare everything to chess. I know it's annoying. We're looking at different positions on the chessboard, but the rules are still the same, right? Okay. No matter how bad your position is or how good your position is, you're still trying to achieve the same objectives. And and you want you want the man to get high status and you want the man to feel secure in himself. And I think it's it's very difficult. I can only talk from the male perspective because I am a man. It is very difficult. If I were to meet a woman who I liked very much, but she had X whatever, past whatever, whatever. My concerns would be, how do I know that I'm still the number one? How do I know I'm most important in her life, especially if I don't measure up in certain key metrics? And two, the second thing that's most scary for men is we understand that men are constantly after what we have. Like, your inboxes are all full. Like, they may not be with guys you want to reply to, but guys are still trying to get it. That's the male life. The male life is people are trying to take everything from me. And, and that's very scary. And you have to make your man really believe like that's impossible. If a man truly believes that nobody can take you from him, he's going to love you in a different way. It, 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 you, can give me, you can give me two carbon copies of the same chick, but one I think might cheat in the right circumstances and one I know no matter what would never leave me. The love I'll feel for this one is a different planet to the love mm-hmm. I feel for this one, even though the same person. Right. Because that's every man's biggest fear is a woman cheating or leaving because there's something visceral and something different about it. I know I talk things and I say men can do things and women can't and all this stuff. 
But like, if a woman cheats on a man, that hurts the man at a level that it doesn't hurt the woman if the man cheats on her. It's different. It's it's different biologically. It's different. It's different evolutionarily. Like that's what men used to fight and die over. You talk to my chick. You look it's like at my you cut chick. His dick off. Yeah, it's like you demasculinize him on every level. Like, and this is why you see these TikToks, right? You see these TikToks. Me and my man went on a break, got back together. He fucked twenty girls, and now he's crying because I went on a date. Yes, <laughs> completely yes. Because the, the the damage level is different. It's just a different thing. So you have to understand the paradigms. You have to understand to play the game, and that's how you make men happy. And I know very well how. I like to believe that I know I would know very well how to make a woman happy. And and I know and whether I do that or not is a conscious decision. And that's where you get to a certain level of grand mastery where I if I get a woman, I will literally decide out of ten how happy do I want her? Do I want does she deserve to be happy ten? Or should I keep her like crying half the time? That it's very conscious. And women don't think that way. But I'm saying if you're a smart, if you're a cunning woman, you can be like that. You could be a bit more like, you know what? I want him infatuated with me. This guy ain't worth the time. That guy I want. And then when you're going to do that, just like the game of chess, if you play chess, it's not big moves that make you lose. It's small positional plays. It's that time you argued about your favorite car. It's the time you disagreed with him about the favorite band. It's the dumb shit that adds up. Whereas really, truthfully, if you're truly smart about the game, you can get him to a point after a few months where he's like, she's my soulmate. Bro. She, I, she, I, she loves everything I love. We think the same. Our hearts are connected. Boom. <laughs> and then you're safe. Just don't fuck it up from there. But, the game. but I just feel like it's so contradicting to feel like what your overall message is, which is about truth. So it's like if if my truth, like if it can be destroyed by the truth, it should be destroyed by the truth. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like why it, it's it, it's really mind boggling to me because I feel like how could you even be a mentally, emotionally, sexually stimulated by a woman who is just agreeable and you know it just it doesn't have her that's, own mind. I, I just don't see that. That is exactly that is exactly <laughs> that is exactly what every man wants. We don't want you to be complete robots. We're not saying we can't have a joke with you. We can't say we can't have a laugh with you. We're not saying you can't have a personality. But when it comes to things like agreement, there is not a single man in the world who's gonna say she's too agreeable. She just agrees with me on it. She agrees with me on all the important things in my life. She's too agreeable. I want someone else. Fuck no. You're completely and utterly wrong on that point. It's a huge point. You, this idea that I understand if you're a complete doormat and you set no standards, men might walk all over you. I'm not talking about yeah. that. I'm talking about agreeability and agreeableness as a whole. Mm. Men love the idea of an agreeable woman because it gives status and it makes the man feel like he's a teacher and it makes the man feel in charge and it satisfies his ego. And to you, they may be small little tiny points, but to him, they're a big deal. If mm. I were to sit, I'm telling you right now, if I were to sit with, with one of my chicks or whatever, or my chick, and I'll just sit in the Lambo and say, Lambo's the best car of all of them. I prefer the Lambo. And she goes, I don't like that one. I'm like, listen, I bought them all, and I fucking said this is the best one. Shut up. And it would annoy me because it's, that's my reality. I want her to become part of my reality. It's the thing. And you talk about truth. It's interesting because the truth of your heart and the truth of your soul is to be happy. That's truth. Truth is for you to end up happy. Now, if you have to sit there and agree on a, on a, especially on a subject you don't give a fuck about, right? If it's something you care about and you are very knowledgeable about, if it's ancient Roman history and you have a degree in ancient Rome, <laughs> then fine, argue the point. But if it's cars <laughs> mm. or something you don't even give a shit about, <laughs> what, easy. What, what, yeah, you're missing the chance to get points on the scoreboard, an easy free throw, and you're just yeah. fucking it up going, ah, oh, no, no, no. Why? What? Nah, the true. truth is just, just play the game and win. And, and That's Andrew, the yeah. truth. Andrew could be the best female dating or just, yeah. or just learn a couple of words like how many talks, horsepower. Yeah, just just throw some game. words in. Like how much horsepower has it got? That's it. Hey, <laughs> with all due respect, not all men are like that. Some men respect a woman that has her own mind. I know you and the type of men that you're speaking on behalf Let of. Let me tell you something. Like a woman Let that... I understand. Will just be I, so I, agreeable I, to everything he says. I but like, I've dated men that just respect that I can make decisions let, let and me, will actually submissive ask women for my have input. their own mind. Yeah, completely. That's the uh, first there's point. sometimes that he might be discussing stuff that he might want to be discussed, completely. and there's sometimes we're like, shut the fuck up and let me say what I've got to say. Yes, completely. and maybe I don't even believe in star signs, but my man's we're, a Sagittarius, so yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> all this illogical we, stuff and feelings and emotions, and but, no, you don't cry about shit. Shut up, it. get on with it. Yeah, it's big. Go, so, get so, on with it. Completely. And submissive women have their own mind, but this is something else you have to take into consideration, and this is super important and super true. The reason a lot of women don't truly understand a lot of things about relationships and, and how it works with men, et cetera, is because men will lie to you. Mm -hmm. Men lie for the same reason you wear makeup, because men fall in love with what they see. <laughs> 
Men fall in love with what they see, and women fall in love with what they hear. So we will lie to you. So you'll go on a date with a guy, and you'll sit there and say, I don't listen, and no, I'm, I'm independent, I da-da-da. And what's that man going to say? Oh, I love yeah, that. That's exactly the kind of woman I want. Come suck this. It's a fucking lie. That is not what he wants. There, it's not what he wants. I'm telling you the but truth he wants of what now. he wants. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he can't be bothered to argue with you at dinner. Because he doesn't, because, and you know what? Most men aren't smooth enough to do it. I can sit with a chick and disagree with her and be funny enough and smart enough and charismatic enough and I'm high status enough and she respects me enough to listen. But if I'm just some normal dude and I start arguing with a chick, she's going to bounce on the dinner and say, fuck you. Yeah. See ya. So most dudes' dating strategy, most dudes' mating strategy is just pure agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything to get the puss because they're fucking dorks. That's fine. That, 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 that's the truth, right? A real G will sit there and say, what do you mean? I don't want to hear this shit. I'm telling you the baseline of how men truly function. If I'm expected to fight and die to protect you, because that's what is expected of me by society and of you. You may think you don't expect that of me, but if we're walking down through London in the middle of the night and two guys come up with machetes, you're going to hide behind me knowing I'm going to die because I can't win this fight. I'm expected to die to protect you. Well, then I expect you to agree with me. I'm not here to fucking die for somebody who disagrees with me on everything. That's not what I'm here to fucking... If I have that obligation to die on the spot for you, you have the obligation to pretend you like BMWs. So do your fucking part and shut up. And, you know, and that's the bottom line yeah. of it. And you know the difference but is, I the only difference... Like, he's top G and I was like, the only difference between him and my man and the level of respect is money. That's, that, that, that's the only difference. And, and this so is he, the same way he talks, see, the same I way he say, is. I, I don't the, and, to my but man. people say like, "Oh, my man only owns forty thousand, so he can't talk to me the way Andrew Tate talks." So is why not? Completely. And no, I think money and is a big factor though. It, no, it's not. In, no, a because, in a beautiful no, because relationship, you can't have a woman it's that's not. paying her own bills. She's doing everything for herself. I mean, she's a man. And then you're gonna tell her. Of course, but I'm oh, saying... Oh, do this. But you, you're different. Do you not that. work, Auntie She Jenny. doesn't need to work. You take all that stress away from in her. I don't then work. Then she'll be a lot That's more... Why does, why does I don't money, work. Wait, why does no. money have to matter for submission? That's what I mean. Because, I don't because work. if you have work. enough money to make sure that she doesn't need to work, go and deal with her boss every day, I don't do work. all this stress, all these bills, mm. then of course she's going but to listen, look up to but, you and be like, but, but oh, this, okay, he pays my bills. You know My what? man must own about 40,000. I don't work. I'm like, you know what I'm so... I just never... I grew up in a 1% family. I never expected a dude to pay for everything. I don't know. I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't. But I, and I still do. Like, like, and I just, I. I just. I don't like, expect my, a man my, to pay for my life. Both of my parents worked, but my mom still submitted to my dad. Like it yeah. wasn't. The, guy, the point is this: in every relationship that's beautiful, every relationship that's happy, regardless of the socioeconomic scale, regardless of how rich or poor they are, regardless of how famous they are, regardless of how whatever, in every relationship where people are truly happy, pay attention. The man is in charge. He's the top G of that house. His woman makes him feel that way. She respects him for what he does, and they are happy. We're talking about me out here in the world, social media, whatever. It doesn't matter. Every man wants to be the man of his household, the king of his castle. Every single happy relationship is the same. I genuinely implore you to name a happy relationship where the woman's in charge. Name one. You can't. They end up broken up. They fucking she leaves him. Whatever. Name a happy relationship where the woman doesn't blindly say, okay, I won't go to that concert. Name one. There is only one framework in which people are happy with the man in charge. The woman trusts and respects him enough to let him be in charge. And they're a happy couple in relationship. Mm. Any other type of relationship is a time bomb to the end. So if you want a happy relationship, that's what you should be aiming for. You need to be think you need to be perspicacious enough and think about these things and sit and go, well, that's the only way relationships work. So I need to build it that way. I think instead of sit, coming along and believing you're going to reinvent the wheel. Okay, mm. so, so Tate, I, I want to guys. I want to wait. Wait, I want to. I want to hit one more topic because we're running out of time. Uh. So, so I want to actually give the ladies a chance to say, what do you guys disagree with um, from the red pill and men centric content? <gasps> Can I go first? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm submissive, though. <laughs> no, Brittany can go first. Um, she... I'm not really familiar with all of the topics. I'm assuming, like, <laughs> the stuff that you guys talk about yeah. are considered the red pill. Um, it's not even, like, about, like, disagreeing. I think you, I can respect someone's point of view mm -hmm. and understand where that truth exists for a lot of people. And I just feel like, okay, cool. Like I don't, I, I don't know. I don't really disagree. It's a, just a perspective on life. 
I'm not here to be like, you're wrong for thinking like that. You're wrong for categorizing, using this scale, using that. Like, it's a perspective. It's valid. And I totally see certain angles. Like, there's a lot of stuff that was said that, I mean, there's so many people on this panel, it's hard to talk, but it's like, there's a lot of things I've said, I, okay, maybe I don't agree with just because, again, my walk of life and what I've seen and how I feel and what how I choose to be empathetic towards people, regardless of whatever they've been through. Mm -hmm. But I don't really... It's, so it's more, for you, it's the lack of empathy sometimes. Yeah, I yeah. think that's probably it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let Esther go. <laughs> you punish me, yeah. No worries, um, we'll talk. See, what I don't really agree with is the insult culture of men feeling like they're entitled to a woman. A lot of men don't look good. They don't got money. They don't do anything for themselves. And they expect women to want to have sex with them, women to want to be with them. Why should she want to be okay, with you? Okay, but let me ask you a very important Why? I, let me ask you a very important question. The, those delusional men, do they sleep with women? Of course not. Okay. okay. But, but they get angry. You see them so, in Pell's okay, comments. Wait, wait, oh, saying, she's a modern woman. It's like, yeah. no, she doesn't want you because you are a low life. Get over it. Go and work. Go to the gym. Go work on yourself. Go out and get a job. Go and get some money. Wait, the red pill no, they, they, they just they just cry what they, that's about what, it. That's what most of the men centric content tells guys to do. Go to the gym. Get your money up. Like that sort of thing. Learn game. No, but that's not what they're doing. What they're doing is saying, oh, women are delusional. Oh, women want this. Why, no, why women know what they you want don't, you if don't, you want those women go and do what they want you don't and then to, you'll be chosen you don't have to worry about the men that aren't getting laid and all the women are ignoring okay yeah youtube comments but besides youtube comments they have no voice in society and they don't exist and nobody gives a shit right so this is what i was saying earlier about about reality slaps men in the face and shows them their place very quickly because all these men reality is showing them their place there are women who are disagreeable and unlikable and doing wrong things and acting badly and fucking up how to make a man attracted to them. And they're not being slapped in the face by reality because they're still ending up with a partner. So this is the point we're trying to make here. I agree. I know what you're saying about Red Pill. There's a whole bunch of bitter, hate-filled guys. I agree with that. Yes. Can I'm I just my... drop another comment? When I came on your show, they were in my DMs. I'm thinking, do you not have things to do with your life? Like, the fact that you sit on Pearl's little comments and then come into my my social media and then slide in my DMs. Like, you really have nothing to Wait, do with your life. were they hitting on you? Or were they, like, Oh, insulting? no, they were calling me a misandrist. Oh, some, some girls get hit on even after they insult. Oh, no, they were calling me a misandrist because <laughs> like of the it. fact they that, get, like, they, we just people, don't want people, you. People, like, I get, get over it. Well, that's just the internet, though. Like, I get death threats. I get, like, people insulting yeah, me. Yeah, but it's people not make video, good like, enough. It's just, it's I, think just, I mean, I just think, like, you go on the internet Duh. Like, yeah, that, you're going to get insulted on the internet. Who hasn't been but insulted? But it's obviously, it's quite hard, oh, especially when you're receiving a lot of hate from all these men. I mean, I, it's, I, I it's get, quite I get hard. it. I've had, I've, had, I've, had really hard. I've, had, I've had hundreds of videos made on TikTok like that go after my appearance. It happens to me like but every Pearl, single you day. Caught a girl Wait, a she's whale. a Pisces. She's a Pisces. You know, Pearl, right. hey, Pearl you called, called somebody I a called, whale. No, that is no, a big no, Okay, insult. one, one, one. I called her a whale after she attacked <laughs> me. After she, she attacked me, she knocks the mic out of my hand. She called me a slag. I didn't know what that meant at the time. Okay, okay. I, I had no idea what that meant. She a called me a slag, a put the mic out of my hand. So, of course, I'm going to call her a whale. You, you attacked me first. That's what they never talk about. You got Rules called a whale engagement. because you attacked me. I missed a good episode, it sounds like. <laughs> no, it was, just, it no, was, it was, it was a street interview. interview. And this wow. girl, she, like, knocks the mic out of my hand. And they're pulling her back. You I have you, you slag. And I was like, you're effing whale. Drunken females. But it was like, it was like, that was a response. I've never called someone on my show a whale individually. But when I came on your show, you were quite rude to me. Um, I'm not gonna lie. No, I'm not gonna lie. The way you conduct your like show today You're was mean. great. Today was great. But when I was on your show last time, you were like, "Why you talk too much?" I'm thinking, "Who is this <laughs> woman talking to me like that?" I'm not a child. But that's the thing because you, you can, can you be. Kept, you kept interrupting everybody the whole show. No, that's no, what happened. No, no, you no. kept interrupting. But sometimes, so were you. So were you. Because you were the queen. Because, queen. Because, because I'm the host. Yeah. The and queen. so so today it's like we have we have a big guest. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him talk. But you're just, and no offense, you're just a normal guest. And normal mm. guests, we don't let dominate the entire conversation. I wasn't dominating and, and wait, the conversation. You, 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 you were. You probably talked 70% of the time. And so I have to interrupt you and stop you because you're talking and nobody else in the but room had a chance. Need... And, and nobody else in the room had a chance to talk. I understand I interrupt people, but that's part of your job as a host is to control the conversation. And if anything, I probably control the conversation less than I should compared to most hosts. No, but I think it's the way that you were rude. 
Uh -huh. You could just be like, okay, let him let the next person talk. You were like, why are you talking to me? Dude, that is so dude. because rude. because because like that, because like that we, had tried, that we had tried we had tried we had tried multiple times to tell you nicely, M multiple times to tell you nicely, and it just had to es it just kept escalating. That is not true. And you I think you you're you're trying to gaslight me right now because okay, that's okay, not true. Okay. The thing is, you didn't agree with what I was saying, and then you resulted. You and Auntie resulted to insults. It was an that, insult. That, that, that's the reason. That's the, but that's the reason I would say I'm not coming for you right now because you know what? It's your show. But what I'm trying to say is... You are coming for us. You are coming for us. You just open your mouth. You are coming for us. Listen, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is... How was I rude to you? No. How was I rude to you? Why are you calling my name into it? How was I rude to you? But you were rude. How was I rude? You were rude. This is this is just my point of view. You you told a story where you said... In, in other, you didn't say you're your too face. nice you, about it, you, Pearl. You said it too nice. Listen, okay. right? You I'm come on the show. You come answer. on the show, right? I don't care right now because Actually, you come we're on the not show. On the streets. Can you, you come calm on down. Here. You come on you here. You sound like a hooligan. Am, Please just listen, slow right? down. If I sound like a hooligan, down. don't tell me about calm okay. down, because right? You're because you're shouting at me. Why are you shouting at me? Hang on, hang on. I heard Mr. Tate talking right with passion, right, and loud. I heard no way to him to calm down, right? You're there shouting off your mouth, right? I am being loud. I am being loud. I don't tell me about calm down because when he was talking, who was you're screeching at. Listen, right, as far as I'm concerned, don't even think about coming on Pearl's show and disrespecting her. You've done it already and now you're coming back here to do it again. Pearl wasn't rude to you. She was right? rude to Pearl me. Pearl wasn't rude to you. Yes, you she know was. what? Because we spoke the truth, I'm not, not your truth. Shouting. Not your truth. Because at the end of the day, it's all out there. If you don't know what a woman Auntie, is wow. and you can't say what a woman is, you know what you're, you're actually a bully. You're actually a bully. Because why? I'm like three times less your age and you're screaming at that. Guys, 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 guys. You can't do that. Don't come and say this podcast. Have some hey, manners, stop, auntie. Stop, stop, like, stop, guys, what? Guys, I don't stop, understand stop, this. Stop, 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 manners. stop, stop. Okay. All right, guys, let's take a second to hear from our channel sponsor. Identity theft can be a nightmare situation if it ever happens to you. One victim from San Francisco described her experience after losing her wallet at a bar. Apparently, I stole a Tesla. I got in a car accident with it. I got a new iPhone. I opened two new checking accounts and went on a bad check writing spree for as much as $13,000 at a time. I attempted to open dozens of new credit cards. I wrote a check for someone's bail, which they skipped, and so on. It took this victim years and heavy amounts of stress to her life to undo what the thieves did to her. If she would have had an identity protection at the time, she could have mitigated some of the damage that the thieves were able to do to her. Stories like this are happening all over the world, and you have to be on high alert to protect yourself. One way to protect yourself with identity from identity theft is with Virtual Shield One. It monitors banking, retirement, and investment institutions for potential data breaches, dark web scans, social security protection with 24 seven alerts, and can protect you and your family with up to a $1 million insurance policy. Virtual Shield One includes free access to Virtual Shield's industry-leading VPN with unlimited VPN access and advanced VPN plus features to keep your internet and cell browsing, activity anonymous and private. The service also includes malware and ad blocking. With a 30-day free trial and 67% off this holiday season, what do you have to lose? I use it myself and love how it makes me feel safe by protecting my identity and keeping my browsing history anonymous. Just click the link below or simply visit www.virtualshield.com slash pearly. That's www.virtualshield.com slash pearly and protect your identity today. Remember, supporting my sponsor supports this channel. Thank you guys again. Um, I just think we're going to see that situation differently. I don't think I was rude to you. I actually think I was quite polite, but that's just my opinion. You think I was rude. Okay. I was just um, trying to explain why the, the women okay. came for you. To be, that's to be, all to be I was fair, saying. To be fair, then, you, then you called me racist and sexist I on said, another podcast. No, okay. I said, okay. I said, I said your followers, your said, followers uh -huh. were racist because uh -huh. they called me a degenerate okay. Nigerian okay. woman. Okay. Did they not? Okay. okay. <laughs> Did they okay. not? Okay. Okay. Proving okay. right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your disagreement. Time, okay, your disagreement. Let's go back. Well. Let's go back to the topic. Your disagreement with the red pill. Oh, so the insult culture. The insult. You don't. Insult. You don't like the bad comments. 
Okay. No, no, I, I, no, I, no not the bad okay. comments. The fact that they just feel entitled. Okay. When women say what they want, they feel so entitled that women need to change that. It's like, no, women like what they like. Just like a, a, a man likes a woman that looks good, a man that, a woman that cooks, a woman that's younger. Like he said, someone that's not been traumatized, that's not been through so much experience. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't cry about it, you know? Yes, we, we do. Do you, know yes, what, we do. do you know what women do yes, now? Yes, wait, wait, wait. We, I, need to, I need to stop you there. Yes, we do. What is body positivity? What is slut shaming? We do cry about it, and we cry about it loud on every social media platform. We do. So yeah, but there's no, there's no, there, wait, I'm just going to give you an equivalent. There's no short man shaming. No, you don't hear the men crying about that. They, Women, by they and do large, cry about it. No, they don't. They, yes, not, they not, do. Not, there's, do, you, do you see short men being pushed to be on the cover of magazines? Where they say we we need more short men, short short male models. Oh, I see what you mean. Where, where oh, they're okay. they're putting plus size women on the cover of Tom magazines. Tom Cruise oh, okay. is short as. I think air. I think he's like five eight to five there's, ten, which is average actually. Like most men. women don't know, only fifteen percent of men over six <laughs> foot. Yeah. Okay, I don't but know I think everyone different. should be positive about what they have. Like you know what? If you don't have money, like own it. Be happy with yourself. And Just I think, because I think a woman it, doesn't think, want you, I think that's okay. I, I that it's fine. I agree with you, but I'm saying like men have to deal with the consequences. Like an average chick can still sleep with an NBA player who who's like That's a top, top top ten percent. They want. Yeah, they they want okay, 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 okay. okay. I'll carry. give you. I'll really? give you. I'll give you an example. Okay, I, I've I've had guys on that level message me. I think I'm an average chick. I, I would never in my right mind think that any of them would take me like. But you're rich. But but I'm. I, Pearl, the, men they don't, want men, your money. Men don't care your about your money. They no, they don't. Some they don't. Men they do. don't. Okay, Some men wait, do. Wait, Pearl's wait, not rich. Wait. Pearl is what? not rich. What? She's from a she's from a rich background. No, okay. She's okay. Okay. So they're okay. seeing okay. Okay. like I, I, okay. The but I'm, I'm saying men, men don't care about your money. So Some that's, men that's nothing. do. Some do. That's bums. Some bums do. care about your money. Okay, no, it's I don't. Status, I personally though. don't like bums. That's just not my thing. That might be your thing. Okay, <laughs> you want a high value man. I'm I not understand. saying high I value. Understand. I'm saying I don't. I don't like guys that don't have jobs. Just, just, just. For can me. I? Can I just yeah. say something that's going to shock everybody? I would like to hear what Denalva's got to say now. Oh my days! You <laughs> know how much I've been holding on to my seat. Like, when is it my turn to unleash everything that's been in my head? Okay, cool. Question was again. Sorry. What do you disagree with from the red pill? What I disagree with the red pill movement is the fact that it fails to understand that it has extreme limitations because you focus a lot on the extremities of things. And I will revert that back to me. I don't think the red pill addresses the fact that there were a lot of housewives that were left widowed quite young and therefore had no choice but to step up in transition into a strong and evolved modern woman. And I say that because my dad passed away when I was 12 and I didn't have a man in my life to be able to show me the way, not only because there's really just not many men in my life, because my mom focused her energies and efforts into raising us and providing for us because she didn't have a man. And I don't think it would be fair to even expect my mom to, when we're all 12, 13, 14, to go and find a new man, because actually that creates even more issues within the home for us to even to accept him, especially because we had close relationship with my dad. With that said, what the red pill movement fails to address, empathize with, and look for solution is for all the women and the men that come from these sorts of homes where actually it is not your fault that you are a product of your environment. So when you were telling me about housewife, you're masculine, you're this, you're that, I have to say, my mom raised four daughters on her own. By my age, she had the four of us moved freshly to the UK. Of course, she's going to hustle. Of course, I'm going to go through education. Of course, I'm going to work. Of course, I'm going to have to be strong with myself because there's no man to protect me. So because I've had this sort of background, I've had this sort of experience, people tell me your traumas are, uh, make you less likable or maybe you're too masculine as a woman. No, I am a survivor of a woman, actually, because I didn't have men around me. And I am actually, again, also capable of being a wife, I know how to cook, I know how to actually speak to my man, please him verbally and physically. Okay, so the what's, not the dis what's the, dis so and the I'll disagreement? Tell you, and submit. I'll explain to you, and I'll explain to you the submission side of things where I've actually, the whole show, I've proved that, approved that without having any friction with Andrew Tate. As much as he may even say that may not be desirable or not, but I come up with my own solutions where I don't have to compromise who I am, but I can still please you as a man. You told me your favorite car is that one, even though I like that one, I'll be like, do you know what? I like that one, but looking at yours, yours is really nice too, you know? I really like it. you got good taste. It's that simple. What people, uh, ex um, 
What people are failing to do with the Red Bull movement is to understand that there can be a compromise because I've had to compromise my life as a woman to be able to survive because I didn't okay. have a man around Okay, me. you think the Red Pill doesn't agree with no. believe in compromise? No, and it, it doesn't deal with the, the victims of society, of situations that it's just life. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any points for them? Both of those. Yeah, I can talk about the red pill. I can complain about it just too. too. I think there is, I, I, to be fair, um, I do think there is a lot of angry, bitter men which are attracted to it. Uh, and those are the ones that will leave these stupid comments. My point was Thank that. But my, my point is that they're, they're already being punished by God and by society, so don't worry about it. My point is that if a woman doesn't act correctly, she doesn't feel the true sting of punishment, not in her prime years. She may feel it later, but in her prime years, it doesn't fucking even matter, which is why they do it. Whereas if a man doesn't have a shit in order, trust me, he knows very well because his reality is sucks. And that's why he's sending you DMs because he's lonely because if he had a life, he wouldn't bother, right? So there's that part of it. It does attract a lot of angry, bitter people, but I think that's because life's very difficult as a man, like we said earlier, and some of them end up angry and bitter. The answer to all things, I believe, whether you're a man or you're a woman, to try and heal all rifts between the genders. I think whether you're a man or you're a woman, the answer to all things in life is to take absolute and utter self-accountability for all the good and all the bad. You must look at yourself and realize that everything good that happened in your life is your fault and everything bad that happens in your life is completely your fault. And with that, having that high degree of absolute accountability, it doesn't matter even if it rains outside, I blame myself because I didn't have to be in London, right? I could have gone, I could have stayed in Dubai mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have rained. So I'm responsible for absolutely everything. And if you do that, you pay attention to things and you try your very best to mitigate the negative circumstances and work your hardest, you're going to have a pretty good life. I just want to finish by saying that I believe that men and women are best as a team. Mm -hmm. I don't think any woman will be truly happy without a man. And I certainly know that no man will be happy without a woman. I think it's absolutely beautiful when we work as couples and we create families and we stick to our strengths. When men stick to what they're good at and a woman sticks to what they're good at, that makes them the most powerful team on the planet. And the world we're living in now, we have societal pressures and propagandas, which are trying very hard to divide and split the genders. But truthfully, the power and the beauty of the universe relies in us be working together. So it's been very nice speaking to you, ladies. <laughs> I'm only upset that you ran out of clementines and I'm stuck yeah. with limes. I was going to say, give this man an orange. And those are my limes. So you can There's keep melon them. out there. Oh, okay. We got melon. But uh, <laughs> yeah, all in all, I think it's, I think it's good. And I, I also think that discussion is very, very important. And I think that a lot of these issues are, are delicate and they're nuanced and people listening to conversations like these and hearing the different points of view and, and understanding each other is a, is a fantastic way to progress. And we're entering brand new territory and it's never been done before. And perhaps you can call me old-fashioned. I don't think it's going to be as good as it was in the olden days, but we're going to find out. So uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, okay. Thank you guys all for coming. We'll do a little round of applause for the panel. Um, so why don't we go around and any final thoughts, any social media you want to plug, you can do it now. So start here and then go around. I mean, I'm good. Okay. You already know who she is. Um, I have more like a request. Is that okay? <laughs> Um, could you say my name, please? Oh, I can't pronounce it. Dinalva. Dinalva. That's it. Dinalva. Top G. Dinalva. And Dinalva. Andrew Tate. Dinalva. Sagittarius team representing. Okay. Follow me on the gram, dinalva.ao. He said the name, so you know it's legit. Yeah. Thank you, Pearl. Um, my final thoughts, with just um, reflecting on everything we've been speaking about, I just think men and women, we need to listen to each other. I picked up a lot on what Tate was saying about how women need to be a bit more agreeable, make their man feel like he's the only one, agreed. But also men need to listen to women as well. She needs to feel protected. She needs to feel like you're gonna be there. You're not gonna leave her for another woman. She needs to feel secured. Like, can we all just listen to each other and what we want in each other? And that's the only way we can strengthen the family unit. That's all I have to say. And please follow me, <laughs> Esther, your Nigerian queen. <laughs> um, auntie, you want to go and then you go. See this lady. Are you okay, Auntie? You're right. I'm cool. Mm. I just think that my final thoughts, when it's out there, it's out there. You said it, you said it. That's how I feel. And yes, um, we've all been through trauma. I'm sick of hearing about it. I don't mind if you've got trauma you don't know. But if you know you got trauma, sort it out. I don't want to hear about it. Mm. Call me lack of empathy. No, just like a bullshit. You know you got trauma, sort it out. And um, 
Sometimes when people are talking, women need to listen. Sometimes women need to spend too much time talking. Because I'm, I'm sure that half of what Mr. Tate said was totally lost or mixed around or misunderstood. And um, I don't give a shit if anybody thinks I'm rude. This is why I'm and if you don't like it, it's tough because I ain't changing. My final thoughts. Tell them, tell them to subscribe to your YouTube. She just hit 15,000. Oh, I'm, I'm not even... I, I mean, I'm not even she, I made you a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, and um, um, yeah, Auntie Jenny, American spelling with the Y, Jenny, YouTube. Instagram is nothing on this. I don't go on Instagram. Tell, tell them about your call-in show. Oh, yeah, and I have a call-in show. And I'd like to have a call-in show. The next one, women can phone in and disagree with anything I've said. Anybody that wants to phone in and disagree, phone in live, disagree with me, I'll take it. Whatever you disagree with me on, I'm going to have a disagreement show. Phone up and disagree with me. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, because I can do it. Because I'm a female OG. <laughs> I learned that the that other day. That doesn't sound very agreeable. I learned that the other day. <laughs> okay. the other day. Um, Andrew, do you have anything else you want to plug? Yeah, my Instagram it. Oh, wait, I'm banned. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, YouTube. U, my YouTube it. Oh, I'm banned. <laughs> my Facebook banned. I've got um, MySpace. Anyone got MySpace? No, you Tom, wow. Tom has not banned me. I'm on MySpace. <laughs> Find me on MySpace. <laughs> no, uh... You know, Rumble. Rumble. <laughs> I'm on Rumble, yeah, that's about to say. I'm on Rumble, which is better than YouTube in every way. Sorry, YouTube. Um, Rumble.com slash Tate Speech, and the website is CobraTate.com. Mm. But uh, I, most people tell me, listen, I can't avoid your face on Instagram or TikTok anyway, so uh, it doesn't matter if I'm banned because I'm still around. But CobraTate.com, I, I recommend to people, if you like what I say, I have a free email list. Sign up to the free email list. I send an email every single day about different topics. Some are for the guys, some are for the girls, but they're all on there. Tate speech, that's sick. Tate speech. Okay, thank you guys all for coming. Um, guys, like the video on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell. Make sure you sign up for our memberships, um, especially our second tier. If you want to see me freestyle rap, um, sign up for the second tier <laughs> memberships. <laughs> it's in the behind the scenes vlogs. Um, like the video on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.